Hello, everybody, and welcome to the grand final of the Pokemon Let's Go Any% Percent NMS tournament. Uh, we've got a great race for you today. The tournament started a little over one, uh, two months ago, uh, and we are finally down to our final three racers. Uh, I'm going to be one of your commentators, Etiquette, uh, and with me are fellow commentators Thomas Patrick WX and Kick and Run Keith. Hello, hello, and yeah, thank you, Etiquette. And obviously, this is going to be a fantastic race on this championship Sunday. Uh, same day, technically, as uh, as the Pokemon Company just crowned world champions in VGC, TCG, Pokemon Go, and Unite. Hey, let's just tack on speed running on top of that. Kind of like a world championship, if you think hard enough about it. Uh, I'm Gen, I'm T-Pat. Let's introduce our runners for today. Starting off with our first seed. He was the first seed starting the tournament. There's no surprise to see him the number one seed in the finals as well. We've got Echi, the double world record holder for both Pikachu and Eevee. He's been playing the Pikachu side the whole tournament long, even got a record on round one. We'll see if he can be able to uh, keep that kind of pace up into this finale. How about that, Keith? I mean, this is no surprise, right? Yeah, absolutely not. Uh, He's been down and won every single round. Uh, had a bye um, last round, obviously, just winning straight through. Um, where our other two contestants, the low, new Amber and Headstrong, have both like lost lost in a round and then like had to win like the rest of their matches to get to um, this final. Yeah, we'll see if uh, Echi can make it a perfect five and zero record in this tournament. So our number two seed is new amber who is uh four and one only had uh one loss which was to myself and then won the rematch of that in round five to make it here to the finals funny story about amber who has used eevee in every single run today choosing pikachu how about that i don't i know that there's a bit uh, i was like just unaware of this there was a bid to for amber to choose what game they wanted to they wanted to play, um, so the, everyone that's decided that uh, Amber should play Pika today. Um, actually, I think it might be a good decision to play Pika just from the uh, the fact that like there are a higher just a higher chance of having a more runnable Pikachu than there is an Eevee, which uh, you do not want to lose any time today to an unrunnable nature. Yeah, even Echi in uh, in our Discord mentioned that his advantage was gone since Amber is playing Pika. So we'll see if that holds true. And of course, we've got our third seed, Headstrong, the former world record holder on the Eevee side, has come on so strong in these past two months and has now joined the 301 club in terms of her PB. Don't count out Headstrong because uh, Headstrong also went through the tournament and had a rematch victory, lost to Etiquette in round two, and then one etiquette in round three. So if something's to be said about the second in a rematch, then maybe she'll be able to top Etchy as this is technically a rematch from round four. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. And definitely don't, yeah, definitely do not count out Headstrong on this race. Like, as we know, it's like, she's a strong runner and also just Let's go can be let's go with a lot of uh, random elements. Just like one bad catch can really uh, set you behind like a good 20, 30 seconds and you can use that time to catch up. So definitely like this can this can be anyone's race today. I'm absolutely. so I'm, I'm so, so excited to see all three of these absolutely top runners to just have it. I mean, it feels like there are going to be some haymakers thrown today. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's definitely a really exciting one. Um, we mentioned, obviously, Echi, the current world record holder, Headstrong, uh, previous world record holder um, from oh. back when the game first uh, first had come out. Yeah, don't uh, forget, Amber yeah. actually was is a, a world record holder at 1.2 for Pikachu. Version. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, for about like a week uh, until Echi reclaimed it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so all, all these all these racers have been on the top uh, of their respective games. Uh, in the past, um, or currently, obviously, with Echi's case. Amber is also the only other runner with a sub three time, uh, not in the tournament, but um, definitely, you know, capable of it on pretty much any run. Um, so it's exciting to see. So we're going to get our starter Pokemon here. We're not going to be able to see uh, how good the starters are until the, the trainers either 
uh, check the stats in the lab, um, or more likely on the Pikachu side of things at least, check the stats on the first level up. Here we did see that New Amber got a 26 CP, but Echi got the 27 CP okay. Pikachu. So Echi is confirmed a neutral and thus runnable Pikachu. Amber is going to have to check or just run along with it. I'm suspecting Amber is going to run along with it. I mean, it, the only real natures that are really going to lose time for you in Pikachu version would be the minus attack natures, which is going to be about 16% chance of happening. So, um, and you you don't want to have to reset for 45 seconds uh, about like to gain to get your backup. So, I think Amber would take any Pikachu at this point. Yeah, which is kind of funny because Amber did win round five using the backup uh, Eevee in her case and ended up winning. So so while 40, 45 seconds might feel like a penalty, uh, sometimes it's worth it if you do have the minus nature uh, because it, like if something bad happens in the run, be it unrunnable nature or a Caterpie breaks out four times or Staryless Water to name a few, that can lose just as much time as just having an unrunnable nature. But in this case, uh, Amber is not going to be checking, nor is Etchy, but Headstrong okay. is. Headstrong Ed has adamant. 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 I would I would keep it. Okay, yeah. Yes, I would keep it. Um, adamant does gain you time. I don't think... Minus Special Attack doesn't necessarily lose you a lot of time on EV version. Yeah. Um, it's, it's about equivalent to just like a... a bad neutral special attack um yeah EV anyway so i think you just you run this yeah the, the worst the worst section of the run uh for a minus special attack nature is going to be the rocket hideout section um pretty much everything there is either going to be a, a a unfavorable range um or you know potential two shots things like that uh it's really comes down to like the jesse and james fights as well as the archer fight uh in hideout those are probably the only ones that are really bad with minus special. Yeah, fortunately there are strategies to kind of mitigate that though. Um, mm -hmm. So let's we'll see if like Hedgehog can take advantage of those. Um... Well, one of the things I want to cover, uh, cause we've only seen this once before in this entire tournament, Amber is now only the second person to actually switch games uh, between the tournaments uh, with Headbop being the only other one um who did that uh he also went from eevee to pikachu if i'm remembering that correctly so yes. what's it so how does that affect like your muscle memory how does that affect your strategy or potential gameplay when you're switching between two versions uh i um, think oh, oh go ahead okay. no i was gonna say it, it's not it's not a whole lot especially uh amber kind of has been doing runs of both um so I don't think it's going to affect things too, too much. The biggest thing that you have to worry about, obviously some of the strategies are different between, you know, just muscle memory for different fights. Um, but one of the biggest problems I personally have when switching between games are the different version exclusive Pokemon and just knowing their catch cycles and things like that. Yeah, I, I agree. So that would be just games like pretty often. Yeah, catch cycles are, are generally easy to forget. Um, I would say one thing is that like, for the optimal bag menu when you actually are in mm. your battles is that your special attack and attack are flipped between the versions. So that's just like one thing you have to keep in mind. But it's a very minor thing that you can easily adjust after like one or two uh, menus. And obviously it's super, super competitive debate here is like, what is the faster version between the two? Um, because Echi has been swearing that it's the Pikasai because you can even tell that his PB, the EV PB, is faster, but has chosen, like, quite strongly to play Pikachu through this entire tournament. Um, so is there anything that, like, makes Pikachu more consistent? Or is it really as fast as he says it is because he has put in the two best tournament times so far, um, with Amber getting the third best tournament time as uh, running EV? So it's just kind of curious to see that dynamic between is it faster, is it not, is it personal preference? I know I know that the decision for me was it came mostly down to like the amount of like comfort I had with the different routes. Um I, I do think 
I do think there's a case to be made for both games. Uh, one of the biggest strengths that Pikachu has um, is you have way more runnable Pikachus than you have runnable Eevees. Um, just with Eevee not really wanting minus special or minus uh, speed, Pikachu can kind of get away with both of them. Um, but I, I think the, the drawback of Pikachu is Pikachu does need quite a bit of help throughout some of the mid game. Um, and the route fully you know handles that different you know the help it needs uh, with like Growlithe and friends um, but in a race setting you can easily get sort of screwed over by not finding one of those so it, it is a bit of a gamble at that point so we're gonna see the stats here um, looks like Amber is Amber has a haste, hasty nature there's a minus uh, defense with the nine uh, okay. defense at and then it's 23 at level 6 for uh, speed means hasty uh, but they get, they get an uh, AV and attack, so that's a good yes. thing. Yeah, the AV and attack kind of screwed me up. I was like, wait a second, 17 attack, but wait, what? But yeah, it's the mm -hmm. AV there. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, AVs, every ran every level you get a random like plus one in a stat, um, and these will cycle every 10 levels. So because Amber just got a AV and attack at level 6, their AV at level 16 will also be an attack. Yeah, hasty is not exactly the most beneficial nature uh, for the Pikachu side. Headstrong already getting a Bulbasaur before wow. the first trainer in uh, Forest. That is a massive catch, too. And it should um, be a very reliable here because it is level three. It's the lowest possible level, so it will have the highest possible catch rate. Oh, Ooh. super unfortunate. A berry breakout. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Bulbasaur's uh, catch rate itself is not very high. Um, so even even with the Raspberry, um, it's it's a difficult catch. Yeah, I believe if I pull up my notes here, I think that level three catch should have been around ninety percent to get in. So I do think that's actually a pretty bad breakout to see immediately. Yeah, fun little fact: uh, all of these starter Pokemon, uh, well, the original starter Pokemon, so you're. Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Charmander um, have a 45 catch rate. However, in this game specifically, Bulbasaur has a 120 catch rate for some reason. <laughs> yeah, the the idea is since you can get Bulbasaur this early and you only have access to Pokeballs, uh, it would have actually been an extremely difficult catch if it had its original catch rate. So it seems like the uh, developers put in a little bit of a fail safe to make it uh, a bit more manageable of a catch at this early uh, of the game. Worth noting that Bulbasaur, along with the other starters, and mostly Chansey, are what are considered special spawns. They're about a 0.5% chance to spawn or occupy any given uh, slot, uh, spawn slot. Uh, they are they are unique. There's one per each route, uh, and Bulbasaur is the one on this route, though it's Chansey in most of them. Yeah, Chansey, Bulbasaur, and probably Charmander in Rock Tunnel are going to be the ones that you would expect any runner to catch. Uh, there are other ones you might see during the run, namely Porygon and uh, Squirtle, but those are typically shied away from uh, for a number of reasons. So to bury or not to bury the initial bugs here, uh, always like very highly contested strategy if you don't bury it it's what 73 percent. if you do it's 85 is that enough to warrant going for it i think so i believe it's how risky you want you want to play early like how much time do you want to save early game um and how willing you Ooh, another bulbasaur <laughs> yeah and it's it's worth mentioning so the uh spawns when you when you catch a pokemon you start a catch chain with that pokemon and that pokemon that you're on the catch chain with will become more common uh more likely to spawn that boost does not apply to the special spawns so that is just another 0.5 percent bulbasaur <laughs> so, some might say that's a very blessed run to have already absolutely yeah, um, just want to point out that Amber already has an Oddish um, that's caught in Forest. Um, where Echi is like has both the bugs already, so he's likely going to play Route Two Roulette uh, for Oddish at this point in the run. Yeah. Where Amber is going to like need to catch a Caterpie in the either in Forest or on Route Two. 
yeah, one of the one of the main differences between the two games that you're going to see here for this first section, uh, both games do need to get a grass Pokemon before Brock. Uh, it's just a requirement to get into Brock's gym. Uh, Pikachu is going to be catching Oddish, and Oddish is actually going to be used on the Brock fight. So you really want to catch either an Oddish first, so that way it gains a bunch of experience and tries to hit level 9 or 10 before you fight Brock. Um, or you want to catch it last and do it specifically out on Route 2, because an Oddish on Route 2 is going to be level 9 versus level 7 here in the forest. So um, Amber got an early Oddish, allows, allows them to uh, potentially get up to level 9 or 10 here uh, with all these catches. And then uh, Echi's going to be sort of settling for one on Route 2. Route 2 is nice uh, because, like I said, it is you know higher level Pokemon. Uh, but you only get four spawns at a time. And if they just don't spawn what you want, you have to reload the area. In Here in Viridian Forest, you can have up to 20 things on the screen at the same time. So you just have so many more opportunities to find the Pokemon you're looking for. All right, Echi first out of the forest. But as mentioned, still needs to get the Oddish on Route 2 upper here. Um, runs uh, up the right. grass and gets it. Oh, in the it, final it, it went back and it spawned later. <laughs> yeah, three sp th three things spawned initially. Started to run back and then the fourth one was an oddish. This guy has plot armor. I'm telling you. But otherwise, nothing nothing extraordinary for Etchy. Just got his bugs, got the oddish, and he'll be moving on. Uh, whereas Amber got that Oddish in Forest, just the small, small difference there. Yeah, the putting what's on the route still, I might, I might expect Echi to catch a glowing uh, Pidgey or Rattata here. There was um, a glowing rat at the bottom, I think it yeah. was. Yeah, I I would expect Echi to go for it, as well as Amber. I would expect Amber to either get a Pidgey or a rat here. The Pikachu um, in the party is only level 9. So a little bit of EXP will help. Yeah, yeah this is uh, it's this is just a normal Rattata. It's not glowing, uh, but still ops for the experience. Yeah, I was gonna say this is a, a fairly new development uh, within the last few months of people deciding to catch the the rat here early. Um, rat more so than Pidgey, but Pidgey is also a good option. Basically, uh, now that we have a lot more details about the catch rates and how uh, good or bad certain catches are. Uh, we're a lot more likely to catch something like a Rattata early and then catch Eradicate later on, uh, where normally we would catch a, a Rattata later, so that way we could evolve it in a single level. This Rattata is not going to be evolving, but we're still probably going to be ending up with Eradicate in the end, um, just because we'll be able to catch one over on Route 10, Route 7, Route 8, something like that. Yeah, And that's a, that's a byproduct of not necessarily the information that we got about Rattata, but about Raticate and a lot of those mid-evolution stages. So things like Raticate, Graveler, Nidorino, Nidorina. Once oh. we knew about the catch rate, we kind of knew that, oh, these are actually reasonable catches for us to get. So it makes it way more viable to just get a rat Rattata early and then just catch a Raticate later uh, without too much if any drawbacks in fact the experience is usually super beneficial in both locations yeah. speak I, speaking yeah, of yeah etchy uh etchy got a super sized rattata so like getting mo getting many levels here and involving both the bugs to both butterfree and a uh, beedrill so that's like a huge boon at this point in time at this point of run like you can deposit both bugs like on the first venue within uh mount moon like that is something you absolutely look for in any run you get. Yeah, yeah, incredible to see nine Pokemon registered before you even get to Brock. Usually the average is seven or eight. Yeah, that, that super size. Um, so the, the Pokemon that are glowing in the overworld, um, they are tiny or huge. They're going to be 1.5 times experience. There is some percentage of those uh, random. We You can't tell in the overworld or anything like that. That is actually super size, so it'd be extra large or extra tiny, or extra huge or extra tiny, and those are four times experience. So uh, that was a 500 experience almost Rattata, uh, where everything else is giving you about 100. So uh, Amber getting a little unlucky there, getting flinched by the Onyx. Um, yeah. Onyx can either choose to Rock Throw or Headbutt. Headbutt's just a little unfortunate, but we're through the fight. Yeah, also a little unfortunate that because Aj was leveled nine uh if you have 19 special attack as Oz did it's only a one in 16 
chance to KO the Onyx there. Uh, so ideally, uh, if you can get Onyx to level 10 before the fight, it makes the it makes it much easier. Except in the rare case where it's a mind special attack Onyx, but um, just unfortunate little uh, quirk there with like catching Onyx within bars and then just not getting enough experience on in, on it in time for uh, losing two turns because of it effectively. And that's where the that's where the boon of the high exp ratata that Echi got is going to pay huge dividends here. Uh, meanwhile, for Headstrong as uh, the Eevee player, we kind of referenced this uh, a little bit earlier. Like Pikachu is Pikachu and friends. Uh, Eevee is is I got this. Uh, and in this case, Eevee does use the uh, the given level ten move double kick. Uh, in order to defeat Brock. So even though the grass type is still required, of course, showing the Bulbasaur here, uh, still just going to use the EV. It is a bit of a slower fight. Ends up being a five turn fight because he got a two hit, both Pokemon and the Onyx with a additional Tail Whip on top of that. A um, little bit slower, uh, but it, it's a little less demanding for um, for the EV player. It's just have double kick, whereas Obviously, as you saw on Amber's screen, like you could have a slow Oddish, you could have a minor special attack Oddish, you might get flinched uh, in some of those cases. Uh, it can be you're still a little, you still roll in a little bit more of the dice, uh, but the advantage is Oddish handles Brock much, much better. Yeah, I'm interested to see this level up here on Headstrong's screen because I know uh, uh, the uh, the uh, EV for Headstrong is adamant natured, so if you see a 32 attack stat here that Eevee should just go straight for double kick, but it's only 29 attack, 29. so it's still optimal to uh, go for Tail Whip first in this case. But for players, if you have a level 12 Eevee and 32 attack, go straight for double kick. Skip, skip the Tail Whip. It's worth mentioning, 29 attack is actually fairly high. That's three AVs so far. Um, yeah. 32 over neutral is attack. incredible. It, it, this is all plus attack Eevee, um, so, so it's only one AV. Oh, right, it's Adamant. You're right, you're right. Okay. I was thinking of... Yeah, all right. <laughs> I was thinking of Amber's Hasty. Um, Actually, speaking of Amber, uh, so Amber just did the shop in Pewter. Etchy's about to do the same shop. Um, Probably going to see a difference. I noticed that Amber actually skipped buying the X defense here and instead opted to buy uh, Burn Heals. Um, normally, Pika Runners will not buy Burn Heals here. The only opportunity to get burned, really, before... um before you have like full heal type items is on the Misty fight, which you generally want to be one-shotting. Um, actually, Etchy is buying a burn heal too. Yeah, uh, yeah I so... think Etchy's just playing it safe for this. I'm um, also buying four Awakenings, which is like definitely a safer strategy. Yeah, um, but you, you, you generally want to make sure that the number of items that you're buying is consistent because later on we're going to have something that's called God Menu. Um, where we'll be able to menu left once to get to the X attacks or X special attacks, depending on the game. Uh, and you'll be able to menu up once to get to the other one. And if you pick up an extra item or you run out of a certain item, that's going to mess up your menu for like the entire stretch from basically Vermilion City to catching Starmie. Um, so you, you really want to make sure uh, that whatever you do, if you're improvising your shops at all for races, uh, that you have it planned out. Um, which these runners absolutely will. It's worth noting for Etchy, and he's described this before, is that he makes the decision to buy that X Defend in that shop and doesn't wait for the Saffron shop, which is usually where the Eevee runners do. The X Defend being used for the Giovanni gym fight, which is almost, it's almost two and a half hours from now. And he's making right. that decision now. And since he did not buy that X Defend, um, you can expect two and a half hours from now that Echi is going to do the safe Giovanni fight no matter what, because he's not going to adjust his shopping in the late game to account for that. Yeah, and that is that is a Pika specific thing. Um, if you're running on Eevee, you don't tend to buy your X defense until the Saffron shop way, way later on. Uh, the main difference is we end up with the same number of items uh, because Pikachu will either in the Pewter shop or in the Vermilion shop later on buy Paralyze heals. Uh, you're always going to have burn heals. Um, so you basically fill up those item slots with other items that Pikachu just doesn't need. Um, I... So Amber opting to not fight the youngster before heading downstairs. Um, I believe their Oddish was fairly slow, uh, being outsped by the Bellsprout. So 
not wanting to risk sand attack and things like that, going to go downstairs to get some experience first. Um, you'll typically see, you'll probably see Etchy with his level 12 Oddish. Wow. Uh, go fight that youngster first. It's just slightly better for menuing purposes. Headstar, I'm getting a uh, version exclusive, the Ekans on Route 3. Nice little bonus pick up there. Uh, and it'll it's Headstrong who actually has the uh, lead in terms of catch count. But of course, Amber has the lead in terms of plot. Ooh, kind of a weird situation there. Oh. Had both the uh, Clefairy and the Paris on screen. Uh, opted to go for the Paris first. And a new unglowing Clefairy just spawned right on top of them. So going to have to take this one no matter what now. I do like the play of not running away. Some runners would run away to go catch the other one. Um, the experience is really nice, but Clefairy in general is just worth a lot of experience, so totally fine doing this, especially knowing that you have the glowing Paris um, on the outside. The general goal for this section of the run is to hit have any Pokemon, uh, generally going to be your starter, but it could be any Pokemon, hit level 15 before you exit Mount Moon, uh, and that's in order to enter Misty's Gym. You need a level 15 Pokemon. Yeah, and typically the earlier that you get it, the better anyways. Uh, I know for the... Uh ev side of things if you can hit 15 uh while you're in that basement room it's really really good because you are going just going to save turns on all the remaining fights in mount moon um whereas the minimum requirement obviously is to hit 15 for misty's gym uh, both players do teach headbutts which is the tm that uh, is given from brock's gym Really incredible that this game actually gives you really good TMs for defeating the gym leaders. Uh, mm -hmm. But Headbutt is useful useful for both players. It's a bit more useful for Eevee because you get the stab bonus. Uh, but it's still a quite powerful move even on the Pikachu side. It's cool that both starters uh, kind of flex both their attack and special attack. Yeah, Pikachu uh, leans a little bit heavier on its attack stat, um, mainly because the, you know, special move, well, not special in terms of category, but like the the unique move it's given in Cerulean City is attack focused. Um, and you really only be, use your special attack for like Thundershock here really early, where it's probably pretty much one shotting everything anyways, um, or Thunderbolt later on, where you have a 90 base power move um pretty early into the game so ending up with uh you know more attack being necessary for um pikachu eevee on the other hand primarily cares about both stats um it really depends on which section of the run you're in early on your attack's probably a bit more important uh, where you're relying on headbutt a lot more but later on you're using a lot more of those special moves those move tutor moves that end up being special so your special attack is going to be really, really important looking at the early game or the mid game. All right. I, I was just about to say, how are, how are you feeling if you're etchy right now? We're in that basement room. It was only Geodudes and Zubats uh, and That's... none of them glowing either. Yeah, that was well, my round five. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. also, etchy had the fortune of like having the, uh, the super sized rat. So that's helpful. Like, yeah. Etchy's already moved on and it's like a very spawn. Um, one benefit of Pikachu version over Eevee is that because you do the headbutt menu later is that you get to actually like effectively get more room respawns by just traveling down this tunnel to the uh essentially the big main room of the basement um so etchy is taking advantage of that right now um i also want to point out like a little note uh, between like the gameplay on etchy versus amber size like amber already did a deposit of like her of the bugs and uh clefairy at this point um so at some point they're going to have to do another deposit where Etchy did one clear of like his party, and, and we'll have to do a sec only like one other clear, um, just for the new things they catch in Mount Moon. Um, so like you'll see Etchy like gain a little bit of time from just from like party management this early mm -hmm. on. Party management is just a, it's just an art in this game. Um, just because of the box menu being a little bit slower than the rest of the traditional menu side. So trying to optimize uh, when to deposit things efficiently uh, without losing as much time is just as valuable as not keeping things in your party, which could gain extra levels. And then you're getting 
um, a, lot, a bunch of junk levels that you don't need. Uh, and balance, and that balancing act can be such a fine line, especially at this stage of the run. Uh, in Mount Moon, there's kind of two ways to attack it. It's either do all these like smaller deposits to get everything cycling through your party very quickly, as you're seeing Amber just deposit two things. But it's worth it because both the both that Paris and Geodude, they learn moves at level 12. So even one extra level is really like two extra like things. Like uh, it's the level and the move learned. And if both of them get that, that's like eight to 10 seconds that you've lost. Well, I could have just done the eight to 10 seconds to deposit them in the first place. So knowing that balancing act can be uh, so crucial to save those extra seconds. Uh, the other way is to just do it all at once and in one big deposit. But again, you are losing a couple extra junk level ups to have a more efficient depositing menu. Yeah, I think, yeah, definitely for reasoning. Um, it, when Amber did that first like deposit, uh, had three th things had three things to deposit and also had a glowing Paris on the screen. In that situation, you don't want to have those extra things in your party and then all of a sudden Paris be super sized. Yeah. So you're getting multiple extra levels that you're not really using throughout the run. Um, so like definitely like you have this like very fine decision making you have to make in this run for party management. Yeah, it's it's definitely a situation that pretty much every runner, um, or every top runner at least, has been in where you you see a glowing Pokemon, so you just go for it, and then as you see the amount of experience you got, you have this sudden realization that you really should have deposited first. Um, but yeah, so moving on here, we're at the end of Mount Moon for both Echi and Amber. Um, Headstrong not too, too far behind. Headstrong does have an extra Pokemon, uh, so the three runners are in you know the order of Echi, Amber, and then Headstrong, um, but that's also their Pokemon count order. Uh, so you really can't say that any runner is ahead or behind right now um, by too much, just because it's it's so close. Uh, it yeah, is it's... worth mentioning Amber is going to be a little bit short of hitting level 15, um, I believe, based on the amount of experience that they had after the final catch they did. So they're likely either going to have to catch uh, something like a Clefable or Chansey if they find one here in Mount Moon, uh, or potentially catch something on Route 4. And it's looking it's probably looking likely that you're gonna need something off route four because amber is actually the only one that has caught all three of the normal mm -hmm. spawns so that clefairy uh the clefairy paris and geodude um she already has all three of those headstrong just got the clefairy to spawn that was the only one she was miss missing etchy is missing paris it is worth noting noting yeah. so this catch count is actually quite low you like to be at around 13 14 on average, leaving Mount Moon. Etchy's only at 12, so he's already a little behind on his catch counts. Yeah, yeah, and you'll see that it's actually going to cost, like, Etchy not being level 15 here, um, like, have not missing getting the Paris catch is actually going to cost him some time here. Um, generally, with this fight, you can do this in two turns. Uh, this is going to be a three-turn fight here, so that's about 15 seconds lost um, just by not being level 15. Yeah, and it, and it can be the same for the Eevee side. Um, Eevee just will headbutt both sides with the coughing being a range. Uh, but your partner Pokemon, if you're level 15, can almost always like clean up that two turn. Whereas if you're level 14, depending on how good or bad your attack is, can be um, quite questionable. But should be no problems because again, Headstrong running a plus attack Eevee. Yes. Yeah, and Headstrong has already got the guaranteed attack to KO the coughing in one shot. Um, so That'd it's be... gonna look. So is it looking like Amber is gonna have a three-turn fight here? Because again, uh, their their Pikachu also only level fourteen right now. Yeah, they're also looking like a three-turn. Uh, it might be even a four-turn depending on this roll. Because um, uh, this Oddish is uh, special attack Woo! does not look great. Woo! Right, so, look at so the yeah, plot it's, armor it's, on Etchy screen. Both right. Mankey and Sandshrew on Route Four. So so much for being behind on catch count. That's two bonuses in the span of seconds. That is that is fantastic to see for Echi. Um, you know, losing out on that Paris experience, but gaining it back here with Mankey and uh, Sandshrew. Already had level 15, so didn't need these catches, but still good to see. Amber, like I mentioned earlier, didn't quite hit level 15, so they're going to be looking for uh, just a little bit of experience here. Uh, even could resort in catching one of those Spearows, but there's a Sandshrew, perfect. 
Archon. Here's Archon. Headstrong, yeah, almost hitting level 16. Uh, it's going to be level 16 after this kill here. Um, so really, really interesting to see this sort of like, you know, really low experience for Amber. I guess not too low, but kind of low experience for Amber, kind of high experience for Headstrong. Edgy kind of right there in the middle. Um, and they're all almost out of Mount Moon. Actually, I want to make a, a point here for Headstrong. Headstrong has chosen to keep both Bulbasaur and um, Bellsprout and look like evolve them all the way up. I, as two EV runners, how do you feel about like keeping both the those grass Pokemon and evolving them? I'll let T back go first. Yeah, I was gonna say, Keith, this is something that we've kind of talked about in chat uh, multiple runs because I keep I've personally been bouncing back and forth whether. Should I evolve Bellsprout all the way? Because the advantage of it is you always have that second controller available for your catches. It's a lot safer, it's a lot more consistent, though you're adding quite a bit of overhead. Uh, whereas if you get rid of it, well, you're just getting the speed. If you have Bulbasaur, I tend to lean towards depositing Bellsprout because I get the advantage of having that second controller in my party. Um, but it's less overhead because Bulbasaur obviously evolves at level 16 instead of level 21. So it kind of depends on the situation whether I keep Bellsprout or not. But if I have Bulbasaur, I almost always uh, deposit Bellsprout. But I can totally see that in a race setting, that's still just an extra catch. Um, or in this case, it's just an extra two catches because you got Bulbasaur Ivysaur. So I don't hate the play at all. Um, but yeah, it's kind of just an interesting... Um, decision. What about you, Etiquette? Yeah, I, I would say uh, a lot of similar things. Um, I think that for me, it, a lot of the time comes down to when when did I catch it? Uh, if I catch a level 9 Bell Sprout on Route 2 versus a level 7 Bell Sprout inside the forest, I'm a little bit more, you know, open to evolving it. Uh, likewise, if I catch a level 7 Lured Bulbasaur versus like a level 3 that Headstrong got, um, you know, that would help swing me one way or the other as well. Uh, I think for races, it absolutely is fine to evolve both of them, uh, especially because you, you don't know what's going to happen in terms of Mount Moon. Like, if you just get a Chansey, getting those levels all at once is surprisingly fast. Um, so, you know, you'd be able to get the Ivysaur out of the way. Uh, even here, you know, Headstrong's Ivysaur is already almost level 16. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's totally fine. Probably going to evolve either right before going to route six or right on route six uh, be able to deposit it pretty quickly so i think it's i think it's totally fine so i think you make a good point with the mount moon chancy which we did not see this run but uh if you just get chancy after all of your catches like it's actually really great to have bell sprout as the second one it's pretty much the only one that you're gonna pick because what what are your other options it's either Ekans, which evolves at 22, or even Paris, which evolves at 24, Bellsprout's still just the best option of those three. So if you're gonna pile on a bunch of quote junk levels on your secondary Pokemon, might as well make it that Bellsprout anyways. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. it it's very much just a safe, safe decision. Yeah. Yeah. Just another point. Like hey, we talk about like getting like Mount Moon Chansey here. I think just like there's one benefit we don't really discuss is that like you're gaining all those levels. But you're also gaining all those levels in a catch as opposed to a battle. If like say your Pikachu levels up in a battle, well, you get the you get the level up text, but then you also get shown the stats, which like is another two, three seconds. So like each time you're leveling up because of a catch, that's three seconds that you're not losing to like it gaining the level in battle. So like you'll see like it like for the most advanced runners, and I think Edgy is an example of someone who does this, where it's just like you're trying to minimize the number of levels you get within a battle just to save time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So we see both the, both the Pika runners have already uh, gotten through Misty. Uh, no problem there, obviously, being a Pikachu. It's a little bit more tricky on the Eevee side of things. You basically just don't want to get crit. Uh, Burn is just annoying, but Headstrong got a very clean fight. You're leveraging one of those uh, special move tutor moves, uh, Buzzy Buzz, to get the auto uh, paralysis on the Starmie. So you get that interesting dynamic where uh, you are outsped turn one, but then you outspeed turn two to get that two hit KO on the Starmie. So no burn is what you want to see on that side of things. Yeah, and so then special moves. Eddie, yeah, you was... want to take that one? I was going to say, so special moves. Um, Eevee learned three of them. That's why even though all three runners were kind of around the same spot, 
um, with, you know, Etchy catching two Pokemon, Amber catching one, and then Headstrong catching none on the way out of Mount Moon. Uh, Headstrong still fell pretty far behind, and that's mostly because Eevee learns three of those move tutor moves, while Pikachu only learns one. Uh, Pikachu is going to be taking advantage of the move Zippy Zap, which is a plus two priority move that always critical hits, uh, where Headstrong is going to be, uh, Headstrong's Eevee, I should say, is going to be taking advantage of three move tutor moves. Uh, Bouncy Bubble, which is a water type special move that will heal. Uh, think like water absorb. Uh, Buzzy Buzz, which is a electric type special move that will always par paralyze, which we just saw on the Starmie, and we just saw obliterate that um, Pidgey. And then finally, Sizzly Slide, which is a fire special or fire physical move, I should say, that it will always burn. So uh, Eevee has a ton of move coverage combined with Headbutt from earlier. All of their, you know, all of the Eevee's moves are 90 base power or higher when you take into account same type attack bonus. Uh, so Eevee is just sort of moving along here. Pikachu did save a bunch of time because they only taught one move, but now they only have that one move and their only other coverage moves are like Headbutt, which isn't really, you know, super effective against anything and Double Kick, which is not very powerful, but it's going to come in handy uh, in a few very specific cases later on. Um, so through, the, through this bridge section, it, this tends to be fairly uh, docile in terms of the fights. They're all just one fight. There's just, uh, I think it's the one that Etchy is on is the only mm -hmm. one that has a little bit of variance, uh, whether you one controller it with Pikachu or you do this uh, much safer two controller fight uh, against the Sandshrew. Yeah, I yeah. think they're both opposite for the Sandshrew fight here. You just the, you just don't want to have to take the time to heal uh, poison from a potential poison thing, or just get like you know miss from a sand attack. Um, so I think just playing safe here in a race setting is definitely the right play. Yeah, being able to heal during the battle is really nice as well. You really want to try to be full health, um, or at least closer to full health when you start heading toward Vermilion City and then over into Rock Tunnel. Um, and so being able to heal up here is really nice. Uh, there's going to be a lot of, there's not going to be a lot of opportunities to take damage. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's really nice to do that. But I do want to say, uh, just while we have a little bit of downtime here with Nugget Bridge, um, thank you, Dynam, in the chat for giving us the AV spreads for all of the uh, starter Pokemon. So I uh, mentioned earlier, AVs basically plus one to every stat uh, or plus one to a random stat. Uh, on every level up and it goes in a 10 level cycle so the av you get at level 6 is going to be the same as at level 16 26 and so on um so etchy has an av spread with four defense two special attack one special defense and three speed interesting because he's got zero in attack and we've mentioned yep. that pikachu loves to see higher attack um so uh, a little bit unfortunate on that side yep Amber's, uh, so Etchy's e uh, Pikachu was neutral natured. Um, Amber's is hasty, so plus speed minus defense, um, and has two HP, two attack, three special attack, two special defense, and one speed. And that is a great, that's a great but balanced AV mm -hmm. spread, especially for the Pika side of thing. It's great to see that only one AV went into speed because at this point, Pikachu has too much speed. You don't want any AVs to go in speed. In fact, minus speed natured or, uh, tends to be very good for Pikachu, but getting two in attack and three in special attack, that certainly can be leveraged. Absolutely. And then Headstrong's EV uh, is adamant nature, so plus attack minus special attack. Um, and her AV spread is four HP, two attack, one defense, two special defense, and then one speed. And that's okay. Um, we obviously, Mo, for the most part, knew that we weren't going to see any AVs in Special Attack just because uh, the AVs get redistributed out of the minus stat and then towards the plus stat. Uh, the only exception is if you have the characteristic of the lowered stat uh, that appears to not be the case. But even just getting two attack AVs for EV on a plus attack is going to be more than enough attack to be able to um, get some very important ranges in the run. Ooh, Etchy doing what is called Nox Skip, Nox Connery. Uh, discovered there's a very funky way that you can do Route 25 to dodge a single rotator, which you see Amber stopped at right now. Uh, it's a little bit risky, but it is consistent if your movement is uh, as perfect as it is. 
Uh, Amber, I'll just opt in to uh, wait out that cycle. Very safe to do that. And both Etchy and Amber on the Pika side will pick up that Ether. Meanwhile, Headstrong will not when she gets there, uh, instead opting to pick up a Max Elixir later on in the run. This has to do with uh, how the menu is laid out and how each inventory item just gives you that spatial uh, perfection to give us what is called God Menu for that X Special and X Special attack to appear in the exact same spot in the bottom left corner of the inventory. So it's just a little optimization there, but it makes a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. Etchy opting not to catch the Venonat over on Route 25. Route 25 is kind of a, a, a fickle area. You'll see runners kind of split on whether or not to take the detour to catch Pokemon. Um, Venonat is kind of a difficult catch. It's kind of a little all over the place. Uh, it's one of the main benefits, actually, of having the Bellsprout um, level up, like we mentioned earlier. It's because you can have two controllers when you're catching the Venonat. Um, we'll, we'll see as Headstrong goes for it. And Headstrong is going to go for that, that Venonat. She is going for phased, it. Which is... Phased right through the goal, the the, <laughs> um, the Psyduck. Psyduck, yeah. Um, Venonat does wow, like what a great throw. Hitting an wow. excellent on a Venonat. Wow. That's that, is a, that is a gamer throw right there. All right, so Headstrong already with 17 Pokemon. That is a very high count for the Cerulean section of the run. Um, certainly not the highest, but definitely you love to see it. In general, you want to have more Pokemon. Um, you, I would almost always... We we, gen, we tend to have this like 30 second per Pokemon um, evaluation that we do. Uh, I would rather be, you know, probably 45 seconds behind with one extra Pokemon than 30 seconds ahead with one less Pokemon. Mm. Um, it's just, I, it's I, one I, of those things. Having more Pokemon is almost always better. Uh, even catching this Psyduck, locking her out of Golduck, um, you know, just that extra Pokemon, because you ran into it, may as well. And um, I was going to say, this is definitely an okay decision. It, it was probably not what she wanted to do mm -hmm. um instead just kind of getting boxed in as you'll see all these pokemon were just kind of crowding uh her uh her character there but in this case because you said that the uh the catch count is already well ahead locking yourself out of one pokemon to guarantee that you already get the psyduck uh is already kind of an interesting play Mm -hmm. um, considering that Psyduck, which usually you want to catch on Route 17, one of the lower spawn rates, so you might not even be guaranteed to even see it. So at least you're getting one out of two. All right, T-Pat, yeah. I have an important question for you because you are the person who probably knows the most about every run that has been done just because of all the stats and stuff. I got the page pulled up right now. All right, so I don't know if it'd be written down, but I'm going to ask anyways. Do you know if anybody during the tournament has caught a Squirtle? Uh, I do not believe anyone's caught a Squirtle. I remember somebody seeing one, but they saw it on the way back. And I remember this because Joker uh, on commentary exclaimed it very loud, uh, kind of on par with the, the shiny Snorlax mm -hmm. uh, exclaiming, I don't think anyone caught one, not that I can remember, but I'm very certain that we saw one um, just in an uncatchable position. Interesting, interesting. So, you know how there is a public bounty for anyone who gets hit by faint in the run? Yep. There was a secret bounty for anyone who Ooh. caught a Squirtle. <laughs> and unfortunately, no one in the tournament has done it. Now that we are officially past Route 25, uh, we, can, we can announce it. I'm so sorry, Dynam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dynam um, in chat just mentioned that uh, he said that he did see one in a catchable position on 25 and opted to not catch it. So, yeah, sorry so about that one. A bit unfortunate uh, that that bounty will get rolled into the prize pool. Uh, thank you, Jordan, for sponsoring that one. Um, that's an I interesting just... case. That's an interesting case because, like, Squirtle, as you mentioned, the starters have actually pretty poor catch rates. They have that 45. Uh, and we can also see Charmander in Rock Tunnel. Uh, but by that point, we're usually using double Great Balls. Uh, and just it just seems a little bit more of a solid catch uh, than the Squirtle is. But yeah, Squirtle's very rare. It's usually pretty hype if you see it. But everyone's usually on the fence whether you actually want to catch it or not. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. 
So, like, back to the gameplay. I see Echi yes. and Amber are both are on Route 6. And this is an important route for Pika Trooper. Because you want to catch either one of two things. An Abra or, or a Growlithe. Um, uh, Growlithe is they, it's been used for fights later on Route 10. And, mm -hmm. um, not getting one, just like, just essentially you just lose time by not getting them. It makes the fights more risky. Um, and you see right now, like, Echi has not seen a Growlithe yet. Um, Amber is running all the way over to the coffin corner, as we now call it, to catch a Growlithe. I think I deemed that term, coffin corner, which is, the, I, I call it the left side where that gentleman is, where the uh, guard spec is. It's just out of the way. There's you're, you're effectively just running backwards on that part of the routes. But if you need that Growlithe, you need that Growlithe. And I think Echi is going to be Growlithe. Let, oh, it's there after wow. the trainer's wow. hit. The pull armor continues for this man. He cannot be stopped. Low catch count doesn't matter. He's going to get what he needs on Route 4. No growl doesn't matter. It's already after the skip. I I actually don't even know what to say about that. That's absurd. Having, having a Pokemon spawn in the grass, run through the trainers to the other side, and Echi there, I give up, I'm just gonna run through, runs through, instant dog. Absurd. The only small little disadvantage is that that Growlithe is, uh, I believe, not gonna hit level 18 um, right. for one of the fights. I forget, I think it's the secondary Route 9 fight that it's used on. Um, um, well, that's not actually get either level. Um, at this point, yeah, it's not gonna, it's gonna stay at level 17 through all the all fights, just because yeah, of yeah. the XP curve. That's like the one small disadvantage of catching Growlithe last, so that's why you'll see a lot of players, uh, like in Amber's case, go for Growlithe first specifically. Like Jigglypuff was on the screen, did not, uh, was not hasty about that. Made sure that she got the uh, Growlithe hasty. first, and then got the uh, got the Jigglypuff, and that that's actually why I said hasty. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for noticing that. I, I try with my commentary, you know? No, it's, you're doing great. Um, but yeah, with that, uh, both Echi and Amber are here uh, doing their shop. Uh, this is where you're going to do the bulk of your healing items for the mid game, X items for the mid game, uh, lures, repels, um, escape ropes, things like that. Uh, it's worth mentioning that it looked like, I know Echi did, I think I saw Amber also sell the fossil. Uh, so normally you would sell the fossil in an any percent run and uh, it gives you like 3,500 extra Poké Dollars, which is really nice. Um, in races, you'll see runners kind of split 50-50 on do I sell the Fossil or do I pick up an extra item and sell that instead? That way you have the Fossil as a backup. Uh, the Fossil does take about a 20 extra seconds over a standard catch in order to uh, cool. revive it, but it does give you two Pokémon for basically zero RNG, uh, which can be really beneficial. So meanwhile, Headstrong going through the Route 6 uh, sequence here. Uh, no Growlithe, because that is a version exclusive. Instead, it's Vulpix, not used in the same way. Again, EV just says, I got this, can do it solo. Uh, so there's no like hard requirements when it comes to getting the Abra or the Growlithe uh, or deal with the consequences. Uh, EV will be just fine. The only thing is that Headstrong got to the bottom of the route and didn't see anything until that Vulpix, which was just before the skip. Um, so at the moment, no Jigglypuff, no Abra for her. Just that Vulpix. Yeah, but this is you one know, of those benefits. Here and got it. Perfect. This is one of those benefits I was talking about earlier about having that hike. 19 is still high for the rival yeah. three split, in my opinion. It like, is very high. Usually yeah, you're yeah. like in the 16 to 18 range. So 19 is not like obscene, but it's still pretty high. Um, so she has that luxury of just walking through the route. Oh, I didn't see anything too bad and just keep going. Uh, especially experience is doing great with that one AV in speed. Uh, she's guaranteed to outspeed rivals, th rival threes Pidgeotto, uh, which is an issue that EV runners will face. Uh, it's one of the main reasons why you really don't like running minus attack or minus speed, I should say. Um, so, you know, having that, you know, level 19 already, 19 Pokemon, uh, getting through that route with only one catch is really not that big of a deal. Yeah, and at the moment, you're you're really only losing one catch, and losing is even a loose term there. Uh, the Jigglypuff is is expected, so to not see it there, you're just like, ah, bummer. But you can still get Jigglypuff and Abra, for that matter, 
on Route 7, though you usually are not sticking around Route 7 for any mm. significant amount of time. You typically see the spawns and you say, hey, if it's going to spawn here, it's going to spawn here and I'll take it. So it's not gone forever. Um, it's just kind of a bummer to not get it now. All right, yeah. so Etchy finishing up uh, the Rival 3 fight here on the SSN. Uh, we didn't really talk about it, but this is one of the first main places that you're going to see people using two controllers. Um, obviously, we saw it earlier on the Nugget Bridge section uh, for that one fight, but this fight, you'll almost always see it for both runners, uh, for both games, I should say. And the it is just as broken as you might think. Um, if you're watching the tournament, you probably already know this, but you can basically go into any fight you want with two controllers, uh, and you basically have a two-on-one battle. And one of the really, really really good things about that is you can use items from the second Pokemon's turn on the first Pokemon. So I can use an X attack on my starter Pokemon um, as my second Pokemon's turn. And so you can instantly start the fight with like plus two attack, plus two special. Uh, you would never start with plus two speed because speed is not dynamic in this generation. Um, and so uh, you'll be seeing that a lot. Not as much as you might think. That sounds really busted and it absolutely is but it's also fairly slow you've got this extra extra turn um or this extra time for the the second trainer to spawn in for it to despawn uh once you're done with your setup that second pokemon just kind of there you kind of have to deal with it um you still have to select moves every turn so you're only going to see it in a few places uh you'll see it a little bit more on the pikachu side than on the eevee side but uh definitely one of the things that makes this game really fun and incredibly consistent the, the general idea is uh, if you do a two controller, one turn of that is about the same as two turns of a single controller, but only just a little slower. Yeah. Um, so if you had the option to do a two turn, one controller oh. fight or a one turn, two controller fight, you'd still do the one controller fight. It's just barely faster. But if you can save one of those turns, then it is faster. Or there's, I believe, two fights where it's almost required to do it uh, to controller because you wouldn't even be able to win the fight otherwise one controller. Yeah. Uh, just want to touch on some uh, range things that just came yeah. up. So Headstrong missed the Pidgeotto range uh, with uh, Eevee oh. because it's the uh, minus special attack Eevee. You really that's guaranteed, but in this case missed. And then. This fight coming up for both Edgy and Amber versus, uh, I think, Alicia is the name of the trainer here. That Eevee is level 21 and Pikachu is level 19. A plus two double kick is not guaranteed, uh, especially here for Edgy who has zero attack AVs. Um, this is going to be a very close range for Edgy to actually get the one hit KO on this Eevee on this fight. Yeah, and this is, this is one of those fights that you really don't want to be letting... Uh, both of the fights, actually, <laughs> uh, here with the ranges, that you really don't want to be giving those opponent Pokemon a turn, uh, just because they both actually have Sand Attack. Um, and Sand Attack, obviously, we all know you can miss, um, or Ooh, drops your accuracy so you good. can miss. Yes. Here, the Growlithe Wait. got Sand Attacked, uh, which is you might think is good, but it's actually not, because uh, the Growlithe is going to be the main damage dealer for the second Pokemon that comes out here which is the uh, glue. So Etchy opting to use another X attack on the Pikachu. That way it does just a bit more damage. Uh, yeah, probably also be using Helping Hand and Growlithe. Um, yeah. just, just to make this a three turn fight because in this case, if you just relied on Growlithe potentially hitting Flamethrower mm -hmm. here, um, just that, not gonna work out. Ooh, Good call. And got a flinch on it as well. Got a flinch, yeah. but did miss the range. Um, decent backup, but yeah, definitely unfortunate yeah, so there. Like Two turns lost there just because just because like you missed a range on Eevee and got sand attack. Um, yeah, that's a really unfortunate. Yeah, yeah Amber's growl that range. Game. If uh, if Headstrong would have gotten a Jigglypuff, would have been level twenty for the mm. uh, that rival fight, and then the Pidgeotto would not have been an issue even with minus special. Uh, would have had that extra level, hitting that important level to get that extra damage output. Yeah, and we also don't know any information about what Growlithe's like special attack is here because we didn't see it do anything except helping hand uh, the last battle. Uh, where Amber, we already saw Growlithe uh, KO the Gloom. So if you KO the Gloom, you generally KO the Sandshrew. But as you, we still don't know any information here. So this could go badly. Plus, here plus that Growlithe level. is also level 17. Again, yes. that level short of that uh, important level threshold. 
Um, yeah. Probably it's been said a thousand times, but we'll say it once again. Uh, if if your Pokemon hits a level ending in zero, three, five, or eight, just the damage calculation adds a little bit more at each of those levels. So hitting 18 is way more important than the same attack or special attack stat at level 17. Yep. Yeah, and Ember's Growlithe actually hit level 18 off of the gloom. So it was like perfect timing for that Sandshrew, because that Sandshrew can be a bit of a nuisance. Um, it's it's an awkward Pokemon to go against as a Pikachu, just because, you know, your main move is a electric move. Uh, Sandshrew is a ground type, so can't really use that. So we rely on the or the Growlithe here. Um, and Growlithe can actually get in this really awkward position where it speed ties the Sandshrew, depending on you know what level you're at. And uh, when you speed tie that Sandshrew, you can have things like, oh, I got outsped and it used Dig. Now I oversped it and it, you know, so it dodged another attack of mine. And then I got hit by Dig and like all this other stuff. So definitely nice to see both runners get through that fight on Pikachu version. Uh, Etchy starting Route 10. Amber getting there right now. Route 10 is a extremely important route, of, especially for the Pikachu version. Mm -hmm. This is another one of those points where Pikachu and friends is now going to pick up Hopefully, this Nidoran. Uh, Nidorino is okay, which we see on Amber's screen, but Nido King will be a useful Pokemon on this side. So, to get Nidoran male first on Route 10 is vital for Echi's side. So, yep. he should have no problems for the upcoming sequence, particularly the uh, hideout sequence, uh, now that you got the Nidoran first. And I believe he also had a Raticate on the a screen. Glowing so rat. Tap, um, a tap a ton of EXP onto it. It's gonna go. It's gonna go immediately for it. Hopefully not that Firo. Firo is the worst thing that you can see on this route. Wow, actually going for the YOLO throw. He's going for speed. He was telling me earlier that after seeing my run and all the breakouts, that he wasn't gonna risk even like 90% or 85%. Uh, looks like that has gone out the window knowing that Amber is just so close behind on the exact same route. Uh, Amber getting the uh, Krabby, which is a nice little bonus to pick up here because Krabby's only a 10% spawn chance. You usually don't plan for it, but if you get it, it is a very nice bonus. Yeah, the only downside to Krabby is it is a four level evolution uh, compared to all the other Pokemon on this route being a one level evolution. But it's a totally totally worth it to do. It's just you know guarantees that extra catch, especially here at this point in the run. You're really starting to think about what is my final, like what is my plan to get to 50, um, and that plan generally revolves around two main factors. Uh, the first factor is how do I get an even number of Pokemon, uh, because most of the other Pokemon you're catching are going to evolve, so you're catching pairs of Pokemon as opposed to single Pokemon. Uh, so you want to hit an even number of Pokemon, and then it comes down to, okay, how many of these pairs of Pokemon do I have to catch? Um, so this is, like I said, uh, in addition to the Nidoran male being one of the main Pokemon that you're using as your like helper throughout this section of the run, um, you're also using this as an opportunity to really, really figure out, okay, like how am I getting to 50 Pokemon? Do I have to start resorting to things like Tentacool? Uh, can I potentially skip Pokemon like Grimer or Coughing in the Eevee version? It's it's just uh, a really really important oops. part and seeing so this Amber on Amber's is, screen is not yeah what you Amber want. admitting that probably just not gonna wait around for Nidoran male now and it's just gonna have to go for the uh, Nidorino uh, Keith what are the differences between Nidoran male and Nidorino as a catch well, well for one uh, Nidor for Nidoran male if you catch it at level twenty four it will have poison jab um, where if you catch Nidorino it will not have poison jab poison jab learned by Nidorino at level. 27 um so if you do not wait to evolve it um until then like you, if you want to use nido king you will have to teach it thrash upon an evolution uh, preferably you want to use poison jab um just for just it saves more time um you have more optionality with it obviously um so generally like if you do not get uh nidoran male you prefer to go with a nidoran female and use nido queen strats um which you'll probably see Amber do here, um, unless they elect to go with Nino King's Thrash Threads. But um, generally, like Nino Ran Male um, is the optimal catch here in Route 10. And I just want to say, like Headstrong has had a rough Route 9, Route 10 sequence. Um, once she missed the Sandshrew range earlier, um, it's oh. also a problem. 
product of the minus special attack, and then had to like two C the Raticate on that fight, and then just like the first like the first three spawns were all uh, Ninarinas for a headstrong. So just like just very bad luck, unfortunately. Oh, did finally get a Spearow though, running all the way to the left. Yeah, Route Ten can be so big or great. Even yeah. even Amber uh, is still. Yeah. Amber's having nice, a glow, time. nice glowing Raticate, though. Um, just having that nice little EXP boost at this point of the run can be so, so nice. Um, that goes for either version. Yeah, one of the one of the most important catches in this section of the run uh, for both versions is actually going to be uh, Graveler, believe it or not. Uh, just because it's such a big experience bomb, most of the catches you're getting, even if you get like first throw excellence, wow, that instant Rhyhorn. We'll talk instant about that in a second. Instant Rhyhorn for Rechi, yeah. Um, but yeah, e like even if you get like a first controller or first throw, excellent throw, uh, you're typically getting about like 400 to 500 experience per catch, uh, where, you know, Graveler is 1200 experience. It's 1800 if it's glowing. So it's, it's a really, really important catch. Raticate is basically a second Graveler. Um, so, uh, Keith, why is Rhyhorn so important, and why is everyone mad at Echi for catching it already? <laughs> oh, man, Rhyhorn. It's your Rhyhorn. So, it's a Rhyhorn, um, it's your Rye Pokemon, uh, so as soon as you get on, as soon as you get on it, you just go much, you go much faster through Rock Tunnel. Um, just your, I'm not sure the actual increase of speed, uh, the multiplier over walking speed, but... It's very useful, and also, like, instant Rhyhorn in Pikachu version is excellent. Um, you use Rhyhorn um, later on in a, in a fight versus Jesse and James uh, in Hideout. Um, and level 25 uh, drill run at plus 2 on the Arbok is a much better range than at level 24. Um, in Eevee version, um, you, you would prefer to have instant Rhyhorn as well, because um, you, you can also use it on that same fight, but, like, for Optimal Pikachu, like, Instant Rhyhorn is absolutely brilliant. It can, can essentially turn, like, what would normally be a four-turn fight into a two-turn fight. Yeah, just kind of everything. Uh, everything going his way right now. I mean, everyone knows she has plot armor. Um... <laughs> Right now, see, actually, uh, actually, actually <laughs> didn't actually make a small mistake here uh, by not dismounting um, the Rhyhorn um, being seen by the trainer and also having you know, having uh, two controllers up for this fight. You, you only need a Thunderbolt for this Slowpoke, so a small minor mistake, but it's not going to really cost him much here. Uh, just a little bit of time loss. Um, for, like, fortunately for him, Amber had a kind of like bad Route 10, I would call it. This, to be honest, um, so like he's got some like a little bit of like cushion right now for that. But now running into the Onyx, uh, I'm interested to see if he runs. Yes, so yeah, tower. So, <laughs> so 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 tunnel Onyx is not something you want to catch normally. Um, oh, and almost, almost, got one. almost got sniped by another one there too. Uh, you will get the Graveler. It is kind of funny that uh, that you do need to to make sure that you're you're keeping tabs of multiple different things at this point of the run. Um, through Rock Tunnel, you have you're catching things, you're evolving things, you're fighting other trainers, you're also party managing. Sometimes you have to heal and update your menu positioning. You got to keep track of all those things simultaneously, but all at different times too, because where you get those catches and where you get those evolutions are going to be at different points in this section on each different run. Um, so to kind of forget that, oh, I, I thought I fought that trainer and I ran right past them and then they got the explanation point. It can be just a little lapse of that, but not a common mistake that we see from Echi, uh, but one that you can totally like understand uh, just based on the situation. Um, but yeah, this is actually a decently, I would say this is a decently healthy lead for Echi. It's definitely... Um, got himself a bit of a bumper uh, ahead of Amber and Headstrong. Uh, his catch count is still about similar, but is like a whole room and a whole fight ahead at this point. Uh, and of course, already has Rhyhorn, so he won't be losing any time to uh, not having that ride Pokemon available. 
I just wonder if that was all on Route 10 um, for Amber yeah. and Headstrong. Yeah, that was it all was... Route 10. I think e Echi got his spawns and just decided to go. Amber had to walk around and do a lot of, just like a lot of backtracking to get things. It was weird because even even Echi had just mentioned in chat, he was just like, oh, that Route 10 was kind of meh. But if, if that was a meh Route 10 for him, it was poor for the other two runners. Um, and it's it's very common to think that, you know, all good runs go to die at Route 10. And there is some truth in that kind of statement. Uh, Route 10 is a very make or break point of the run, um, whether or not it's going to continue to be healthy or not. Yeah, I mean, just saw like confirmation uh, a little bit, like about 30 seconds to a minute ago, that Amber is going to be going with Nido Queen strategy, strategies here. Um, so we'll, so even though Echi and Amber are running the same game, we'll be seeing different strategies from them um, for fights coming up. Um, generally, the Nido King uh, is faster and, and less turns overall in terms of your fights. Um, but but, but Nido Queen does have like some. Uh, small advantages where you don't have to switch Pikachu like in and out of slot one. Um, you generally just use Pikachu, so like less calling of trainers, um, time saved that way, but just more turns within your fight. Now, I don't know about you guys, this is something that I've felt uh, has happened throughout the tournament more often than not. Uh, I've always felt that the runner that's ahead tends to get rewarded with better RNG the deeper into the run they've gone. Uh, could you say that that kind of falls into line with like, oh, I've just said that Edgy's built up a bit of a bumper here in the Rock Tunnel se sequence and has Nido King versus Amber's Nido Queen, which is going to continue to swing the advantage in his favor. I've just felt that that's just kind of something that that's it's been a common thread throughout the tournaments. Yeah, I, I think it happens for sure. Um, I, I do think it. I don't know if I would necessarily necessarily say that would be the case for all, like or even a majority of the races in general. But I would say probably some of the closer races um, kind of felt like that. The races where you're really paying attention to the luck that both runners are getting, because it's like if if the runner that's in the in the lead, you know, um, has a misstep or has something that happens. Uh, that you know sets them back a little bit, then the other runner can sort of catch up. Where we definitely have had some races, um, you know, especially earlier on, where you know the gap was just a bit bigger. So like the the runner who was in in first place uh, going into the end game was never really in danger. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's there might be some truth to that. There's also cases where it's like part of the reason Amber fell so far behind here was because they don't have the Nitto King. You know, they were waiting for that Nidoran mail. They had to catch that Nidorino instead. So um, it, it's kind of a double-edged thing where it's like they're behind and don't have Nidoking, but they're also behind because they didn't get Nidoking. Yeah, it's kind of like you make your own luck kind of yeah. statement. Yeah, I feel like as you like as you do this game more often, it's like, like how long are you willing to wait uh, for like the quote unquote good RNG to have it or the or like do you accept like what's happening just and move on and deal with it. Uh, I think for fast for like for faster runners it's just like sometimes you just you just go and just say like I'm gonna I'm gonna run into Queen Queen this time. Um like I know it's a little slower but like waiting fifteen seconds for a Nidoran male to spawn is gonna be slower. So mm -hmm. just go. Yeah, one of one of the things that you'll you'll see runners um, typically buy a one or two repels in Vermilion City, uh, and those repels can be really useful, especially on something like Route 10, where what you can do is you can you already have a lure up because you want the Pokemon to be the maximum level, but you can use a repel to get rid of all of the spawns and then instantly lure again to you know cause the spawns to return back to normal, uh, it'd still be that high level, and so you'll see runners do that sometimes. You didn't really see Amber do that just because the catch count situation was fine. Um, but that is an option that, that runners do have if, let's say, uh, no Nidoran male has spawned, no Nidoran female has spawned, and uh, you are really desperate for that partner Pokemon. So uh, we didn't see any runners do that here, but uh, that is an option that, that runners do typically have. Etchy doing some spinner gymnastics to get to this Machop. 
it was really the last two rooms. He had made that spinner pass right before the ladder, and the spinner was spinning in his direction, but he got just past it before it completed. And yeah, also doing some, some gymnastics here to make sure that he could hit that hitbox without hitting the trainer's hitbox at the same time. Yeah, should be able to get out of here without getting seen. Uh, trainers, after a battle, trainers will typically pause for... So every trainer in the game kind of has their own like internal timer as to when they're going to spin. Uh, oh, every spinning trainer. Um, and that, that timer kind of gets reset when you enter a battle, so... Uh, had plenty of time to get out of that, you know, even though it looked like it might have been precarious if the trainer instant spinned, um, they weren't going to be able to. Yeah, and nice. even if they're mid-spin, they give you a, a pretty nice buffer. Plus, when trainers spin, they just close their eyes. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. They, they need to be, f like, two feet fully set uh, <laughs> before they can reopen their eyes. So there are some very... Look, there can it's, be some very tight passes or they look it, like you should get hits but it's not even until they open their eyes it's until they turn on their laser pointer like they don't even have <laughs> like normal vision they have this like infinitesimally small uh vision there so um there's definitely some stuff you can do so uh looking at etchy getting here out of rock tunnel it was about a 113 45 uh roughly with 28 pokemon uh, Rock Tunnel Exit is typically a really good spot for you to compare between runs, just because you're pretty much done with catching for quite a long time. Uh, you're really not catching, you're not doing a big catching section again until Cycling Road, which Whoa. is oh, about 30 headstrong. minutes from now. Uh, Headstrong went all the way around back up to the Charmander, and it, and the Charmander ran back past the oh, no. vision, and then, and then got rewarded with a Graveler spawn on top of her. Um, so that's that's unfortunate for Headstrong in two ways. Yeah, so for Etchy having 28, that's a bit on the low side, uh, but has more than enough pace in the run uh, to still be considered in the lead. Um, it's actually quite a few fights ahead already. He's already on the rival four fight, whereas Amber is only finishing or in the middle of the fourth out of fifth Rock Tunnel fight. Um, Amber's got 31 right now. Uh, Amber's probably thinking, I wish I could leave the tunnel in this, like, minute. Like, have a 115 mm -hmm. with 31. But it's probably going to be about a minute behind uh, where yeah. they want to be. I would uh, say about low been, ones. Yeah, and Headstrong has a very high catch count, but is also another fight behind. Uh, Amber, Headstrong's probably closer to Amber than Amber is to Etchy at this point. Just based on... This kind of everything that's uh, gone on. And heads are finally getting a Rhyhorn. Nice Kangas. Our Kangas gone on. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where's Joker in chat? <laughs> uh, yeah. Nido King, by the way, of uh, getting a level in battle here is super nice for Echi because now he can identify exactly what that attack stat is. Um, we kind of mentioned that you really don't know what like your Oddish's stats are or your Growlithe stats are. In this case, he just saw all those stats. I believe it was, what, 64, 65 on the attack side, which I think is okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's kind of low for a Nido King, honestly. Um, might be m either minus attack or just very low ABs in attack. Uh, unfortunately, you're not going to really get much advantage um, from having that low of an attack stat. Um, not going to not gonna gain any turns potentially yeah, yeah the there there are two main fights where that attack stat is relevant um one is the hypno fight in rocket hideout which uh is definitely a fight that you almost never get to go for the range um just because it is a you know you, it's a really high uh you know it's a really high attack requirement to to go for that um, the other one is the Rattata Voltorb fight, uh, which basically in order to, or the, the way you save time with high attack is by, um, being able to skip using an X item. It's generally the same number of turns, it's still going to be three turn fight, um, most of the time, but you would just not have to use an X attack. You'd be able to, uh, just poison jab times three instead. Yeah. So something interesting, it looks like Etchy just did. He removed his Machop from his party. Um. I'm guessing. I'm guessing for in terms of just like, I guess keeping an even catch count. Um, yeah. 
at this point of the run. I uh, figured that, like, at this point, that would be the longest to evolve. Uh, so, removing it right now. Um, oh, Dynam in chat saying it was a level 18 Machop. Oh, well, 18 so it must have been okay. unlord. Okay. Um, but yeah, looking at so looking at what Echi has left for catches, uh, he doesn't have a ton of room to be skipping stuff. I mean, obviously, you don't want to be getting 10 levels to evolve something, so like that's perfectly reasonable. Yeah. Um, but like so looking at his catches, the, he just canceled the lure just uh, yeah. in that last room, just kind of admitting, well, I guess I'm not going to get him a chop. And then that's when we saw the gymnastics. Yes. Uh, was for that one. Yeah. So uh, looking at his catches, um, he is expecting to get a Route 17 Pidgey, uh, which is one that can sometimes spawn, sometimes not. Uh, that's three Pokemon, which is really nice. Uh, he's also expecting to get a Route 17 Psyduck. Um, a Tentacool, a Grimer, a Ghastly, like, he needs a lot of things to spawn. Um, there are some, there are definitely some backups, don't get me wrong. Uh, but this is, you know, he's kind of already at the backups that you are, like, willing to do. Uh, so it's definitely going to be a tough one. Yeah, yeah. I, and let's see, Amber's doing the rival free fight right here. And you're, you're seeing where, oh, like, one of the first differences where Nidoqueen Queen, Queen and Nidoqueen King are different. Uh, this is a four a double turn fight for Amber, where usually you pump uh, X attacks into Nido King for Poison Jab. But uh, here on this fight, you pump X attacks into Pikachu, take out the Pidgeotto, um, headbutt on headbutt on Gloom, like in, in generally just heal on that turn, and then pump in a second X attack into the Pikachu on the second turn of Gloom, and then helping hand the final turn to take out the Jolteon. Um, with the Nido Queen, just like all headbutts on Gloom and Jolteon. So it's just like a little bit slower um, here, but where Amber might pick up some time um, is on this Hypno fight coming up for Edgy in, in two fights for Edgy. Um, it's three fights for Amber. Amber will also lose a turn here because um, Pikachu will only be able to two hit KO the Clefairy, where Nido King um, is just one hit KOs with Poison Jab. You know what that means? Metronome time. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Metronome. I got Metronome Substitute last time I saw it. Let's, let's, that let's see that was an interesting fun. one, T. <laughs> I've never seen Substitute. That turned a two turn fight to a three turn fight. Three turn, yeah. You, you oh. just lose a turn to it. Yeah, hopefully you are uh, higher level than Clefairy um, at this fight, so Metronome just doesn't. Uh, uh, come guillotine and KO you because that has happened to runners before. Yeah, I think somebody got somebody got horn drilled once. All right. Um, so now that all three runners are out of rock tunnel, just before we get to see what the metronome is. Uh, so Etchy had a 113.45 with 28. Um, Amber had a 116.30 with 31. That's going to be roughly, like you said, about that minute, minute 15 behind Etchy. Um, accounting for catches. And then Headstrong had a 119.20 with 35, which again is about a minute behind Amber. So uh, Echi definitely has a comfortable lead, but obviously needs a lot more catches. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, and, and we didn't get to see Metronome, it looked like, because uh, Amber the got flinch. the flinch. Got the flinch. I thought. That's okay. We, we might have one more chance to see it on Headstrong screen, uh, yeah. screen anyways. Uh, but yeah, I would I would say that like again with the rock tunnel exit times, like if you're edgy, you're actually quite happy with that. Yeah, your catch count's low, um, but your pace is just cookie right now. Uh, unfortunately, I think for Amber and Headstrong, it is a bit slower than you'd like it to be. Uh, like your catch counts are actually plenty good, especially for Headstrong having 35 on the catch count side. But you said what was a 118 again? 119. 119 20. Yeah, like. It just it just feels a little sluggish. Yeah, like no one you're, you're saying my catch count is great. Why isn't the run two or three minutes faster than yeah. what it actually yeah. is? And yeah, especially for Headstrong right now, um, just in that tough position where she does have the minus special attack and minus special attack. You know, obviously we saw it on rival three lose that one turn, but like hideout is where you're going to lose time. Um, by having minus special attack between the Jesse and James fights. Uh, if you decide to do the standard strategies, probably going to see the Rhyhorn, uh, which we'll talk about when we get there. Um, but also on like the Archer fight, you're probably not going to be one-shotting the Golbat at plus four. Uh, 
you're probably not going to be one-shotting it with a plus two and a rock throw from the Rhyhorn, so you're kind of in that sticky situation where like you're already a bit behind and you're probably going to be losing a little bit more time. So hopefully we can see uh, some, some really good luck there uh, to avoid yeah. some of those time losses, but uh, right yeah, now it does does kind of feel um, pretty bad. Yeah, I yeah. think one thing you can do to adjust for like like the fact you're my special attack on an EV side, like knowing that knowing these ranges is that you maybe buy you maybe sell like additional items in the Vermilion shop and buy more special attacks. Like because like yeah, plus four uh, special attack won't KO the Golbat, but plus six will. Right? Mm -hmm. So like so like you might have to sacrifice a healing turn like afterwards. Um, that you might not have like on the fight normally, but like you're gonna get the KO um, there. So just like there are ways to mitigate it, um, but it's just like willing. Like, are you willing to take a little bit of time loss like earlier on in shop potentially to mitigate? It? So here we see Echi on that Rattata Voltorb fight I mentioned earlier. This is that one turn you're going to lose. Either you're going to X attack um, at the beginning of the fight to guarantee the one shot on both the Rattata and Voltorb, or you're going to sort of not one shot the, the Voltorb and just deal with a two shot. Uh, if you do a good enough roll and you get the 30% poison with Poison Jab, you can one shot it uh, through technicalities, but we didn't see that there. All right, meanwhile, Amber taking on the Hypno fight here uh, with the Nidto Queen. Nidto Queen having Crunch. Uh, does this make this a little bit better of a fight than the Nidto King fight? Yeah, Nidto Queen does have a little bit of a low um, attack stat, but the one benefit here is that it is level 28, so it should be like, a good range at this point. You'll likely see an X attack like onto the Nidto Queen and then a Crunch. Um, so we'll see. Like this will be like one of the fights Ooh. where you can save, and then oh, the punch of that low attack. Essentially, like the time save you you like potentially get from Nidoking Quake was just lost there by not getting that range. Headstrong improving her catch count even more with an Abra. Abra is a fantastic <laughs> wow. bonus to get. It is a pretty pretty easy catch. Um, you can either opt to nanab it, which will cause it to stop moving, so you can get an easy excellent, or just sort of throw like Headstrong did there. Uh, and it evolves in one level. It's it's a super good catch to get. Only 5% on the, the routes it does spawn. Actually, I think it's only 4% here. It's only 4% uh, here four. because Kadabra can also spawn, which occupies that extra 1%. And Remember, Kadabra Headstrong is not a good get, bonus. Uh, and Headstrong did not even get Jigglypuff, so a Jigglypuff could theoretically still spawn and get her another catch. All right, Headstrong going to go into the Pokemon Center here. Uh, we saw the other two runners already do this, um, but on the left side of the center, you can set your nature for the rest of your wild Pokemon to be a certain nature. Runners are going to choose Modest here for the second main of the run. Uh, and Headstrong only, um, Etchy and Amber did not do this, are, is going to be teaching Glitzy Glow, which is another one of Eevee's special moves. This one is a 90 base power psychic move that is special and sets up a light screen. Uh, it's going to be a super, super beneficial move here in the Pokemon hideout because because of all the poison team, types. <laughs> evil team use poison type. Yeah, uh, but of course, with the with the minus special attack, it might not be as effective as it usually is. Yeah, so hopefully Headstrong has a good Rhyhorn for the uh, first Jesse and James fight. Because um, that can that can definitely mitigate some of the minus special attack blows. Um, you're gonna see all three of our contestants like using Rhyhorn um, for the first J and J fight. Um, it is if you can get the drill run KO on the Arbok, it just it it makes the fight much better. This is just the section of the run where you can do almost every fight like a hundred different ways based on, you know, what level are you at? Are you good attack? Are you good special attack? Is your partner Pokemon any good? There's just so many different ways because this is the part of the run where even though the starters have the set IVs, they have perfect 31 IV and everything, you can just have a different experience level at this point in the run because of the catch routes. Yeah, fun fact, this is the part of the run that I usually get to when writing a set of notes and I stop writing the set of notes. <laughs> There's just too much to, too much to handle. Um, 
There's so many different ways you can do it. Um, the the Raticate fight that you just saw Headstrong do, you can fight that with Machop if you want. There's just so many different variations of all these different fights. Um, I think I just saw really Drill just, Run so missed on Amber's screen on that Grimer fight. Ugh. Like, like I said, if you're if, if you're ahead, you tend to just get a little bit better RNG if you're a little behind. And that's just that's not something where it's like, oh, I had to do this risky strat and it didn't pay off. No, that's just like a normal strat. And you just got really unlucky because you missed a 95%, which you just go for every time. I mean, but Etchy did get the KO on the R back. Um, even at plus four, draw run is a range of the losing up, but draw run does have a high critical hit chance. Um, so getting the critical hit here, making this a two turn fight. Um, so like kind of, opt kind of optimal here for Etchy, except that uh, paralysis on Nido King. Um, generally, you do want to heal this up uh, beforehand, just like just so you're not getting status lag. Yep, so here Etchy's gonna do that healing. Um going to his Pokemon box for no reason. Yeah, you going with the shell or sable, but like it's so uh, at this point god menu is no longer available, so you'll have to like you don't have to use um like two uh, like inputs to get to the X attack now for for Giovanni fight, but this'll it'll be the only fight where that really matters. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in Eevee version, you buy those paralyzed heals. You don't need the paralyzed heals in Pikachu, just because Pikachu is electric type, cannot be paralyzed. Um, but because you don't have those paralyzed heals, you do have to dip into those full heal items. Uh, those full heal items do come in handy later on. You're almost always going to be using one on the Blaine fight, uh, because you generally get confused. And then you are typically um, going to... You know, try to keep the other one for late game so that way you can skip buying full heals. Uh, but because Etchy did use it there, might see him buy full heals later. Maybe not. Depends on how much of the other healing items he still has. Yeah, and you saw Etchy there go for a risky strat there where he headbutted the uh, losing turn one hoping for a flinch. And then you can a uh, helping hand um, with a plus four Pikachu at that point. Um, what's risky about it is that if Sludge Bomb uh, poisons you... Like, um, you now have to kill Pikachu, um, mm -hmm. and generally two turns of poison will KO the Pikachu, so you're not going to get that uh, two turn KO on the Weezing. Um, so, like, a little, so a bit risky there. Um, I probably would have just went with the standard uh, Thunderbolt twice on the Weezing there, but uh, it, it ended up working out for Etchy because he didn't get poisoned. Then we'll see Amber going into the, the Jesse and James fight now. We'll see how Drill Run does on our back here. Raikon going into the fight with a little bit low uh, hit points, so you might see Crunch coming out. Um, uh, so no Crunch, so so this fight now is safe. But also, like the Nido Queen is now paralyzed as well. So both the uh, both of them getting uh, a bit of bad luck with Blair onto the the Nido, respectively. Yeah, and generally, um, generally you're going to be helping handing here, but instead you're going to have to go for that extra X attack. It's yeah, and, and yeah, Amber also missed the uh, yeah. range on the Weezing, so Amber is just not getting it. It's just getting wow. the like worst little tiny luck, like this run. Oh no! And then uh, getting and opting then getting to something. you know heal the paralysis, which I think was a good call, um, but getting targeted there, really unfortunate to see. If you're Amber, are you regretting let letting chats decide what version you want to play? Do you think this is more of a Pika problem than it is an Eevee problem? Um, this exact same thing can happen in Eevee, uh, regardless of the strategy you use. Glare is just such a... I mean, it's funny because Toxic is also in the game, or in this fight, but Glare is just such a toxic thing to see here. Um just because, you know, that Arbok doesn't really seem to have, like, AI when it comes to it. Like, sometimes you think, oh, it's because I'm faster, but then you, like, underspeed it by six points, and it still goes for it. And it still goes yeah. for it, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think in the Eevee version, though, it does go... It definitely goes for Glare when Eevee is faster than the Arbok 100% of the time. Yeah. Um, that that would be that would be the uh, case, like, where I... You actually went in 
preferably EV to be slower than your right, but then you're risking a double target on the EV if you're using EV uh, right horn strat and going for drill run. Like you want to KO that Arbok turn one, or the fight just turns a little bit messy. Yeah, uh, it, it definitely does. But uh, yeah, it's just very. It, every time we think you have the AI figured out, you don't have the AI figured out because it'll just do something completely random. Uh, especially with the glare, because yeah, it seems it uses it more often when you are outspeeding the Arbok, but even that's not guaranteed. And then it does it when you are not outspeeding, so it's a very, very weird thing. And then usually, right. usually trainers like to go for uh, KOs with priority when they have it, but there's a very infamous fight in this game where it seems that he never goes for it, and it's it's very weird. You think you get you think you know the AI, and then you know nothing about the AI. Absolutely. So Etchy making his way over to Pokemon Tower. Pokemon Tower is going to be very important for Etchy, uh, just because he is going to need a Ghastly to spawn. Um, like I mentioned earlier, Etchy kind of, uh, you know, a little bit short on Pokemon. Does need pretty much everything to spawn uh, that you would expect to catch in a run. So first one's going to be this Ghastly here. Uh, tower otherwise is pretty unnotable. Um, you've got the fight at the top, the Jesse and James fight, which is basically the same as the one before it. However, you're going to see different strategies between all the runners uh, for the most part. Uh, you see Headstrong actually doing basically the same fight that you'd saw on the Pikachu side of things. Um, but you're going to see a different version of the fight for the one on the top of Tower. And that's mainly because of the move set changes. They're only a couple levels higher. Um, I think level 32 30 to 32 yeah i think it's 32 in in hideout and 34 at the top of tower um but the wheezing has dark pulse which is a you know dark power or dark move but it can flinch um so you don't want to be relying on rhyhorn to do, be your main damage dealer because you could just get flinched to oblivion so what also, you'll definitely yeah, see dark on the... chaos too. oh yeah that too <laughs> rhyhorn has like no special defense yeah, and so what what you'll see, and you, you're kind of seeing it a little bit on Etchy's side, is that the Growlithe is following him around, which is very cute. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, we the Growlithe is gonna uh, not gonna be quite as happy of a pup. Uh, I'm sorry. His, I'm sorry to all the Growlithe lovers out there for introducing that strategy to the. Oh, look at uh, the Growlithe following! I hope nothing bad happens to it. <laughs> I, I am apologizing to everyone now for that. <laughs> there was there was a kind of a, a outdated uh, version of the fights um, where you would sacrifice a Jigglypuff or Clefairy, um, making it very safe. Uh, I believe for both versions, but I know for sure on the EV side uh, mm -hmm. that once again does come into play uh, for Pika. But for Eevee, you'll just keep the Rhyhorn as your partner Pokemon. Kind of hope it does tank the Dark Pulse, and if it does get dark, if it gets double targeted, like, eh, what can you do? But it will make it uh, a bit safer. All right. R really, the risk for the Eevee side of things uh, for that next J and J fight is if Eevee gets double targeted, and that's why the sacrifice strat. Uh, is so much safer because Pikachu has even less defense. Uh, worth noting that the partner Pokemon, uh, EV stats are very balanced, but special defense is still its best stat. Uh, whereas Pikachu, a bit more of the uh, speed glass cannon uh, with all of its points seem seemingly used in the speed stat. Yeah, so looking ahead at um, catch counts, catch routes, um, again, Etchy, obviously, we've mentioned, uh, really needs this Ghastly to spawn, has 50 Pokemon with all of the, just, like, standard backups chosen. Um, so, you know, really is hoping for this Ghastly to spawn. If Ghastly doesn't spawn, kind of has to come up with something else to do. Uh, I'm sure he can. He's the world record holder in both games, so yeah. not too worried there. Amber, on the other hand, actually has 52 planned without Tentacool. So actually has an extra set of Pokemon um, oh! that they are able to skip. Ghastly immediately spawning for Etchy. The That's plot nice. armor continues. <laughs> um, and then and then looking at, at Headstrong as well. Headstrong actually has 54 Pokemon planned, also without tentacles. So has even more Pokemon that she can skip. Um, oh. So Etchy obviously getting pretty lucky here getting this Ghastly. Um, 
but the other runners don't need the Ghastly. They would like to see the Ghastly, but they don't need it. Yeah, usually after Route 10, you kind of know exactly what your catch route is going to be. I like to work backwards. The first the first thing I want to eliminate is Tentacool. It is by far the worst catch that is kind of the most reliable spawning. And then from there, you're eliminating things like Ghastly, Psyduck, uh, Coughing or Grimer, and then anything else that you can get rid of if you are that far ahead. You're typically not. Um, but Echi's in that opposite situation. You could almost say that he is behind a catch, having already planned for Tentacool and all those other things. So that so that Ghastly was vital for this run to continue chugging along. Um, just yeah, just kind of peeking at his catch tracker. Uh, is planning for Arcanine. That is pretty standard. Uh, picking up the Firestone on Route Eight. Uh, Bit, a bit of time ago, it was about a half hour ago that he got that. But there's not really any more, like, catch plus evolution uh, things that he's got on his that he can add. Uh, so things like, you know, like, uh, Psyduck Golduck, you'd catch it and evolve it. Grimer Muck, you catch it and evolve it. He's got all of those planned right now, so if he's gonna catch anything else, they're just gonna be one-offs. Things like Tangela, Magmar, Chansey, Ditto. Yeah, yeah. Um, in a race one -offs. setting. Uh, yeah, in a race setting, would you possibly like use your you go over to maybe Route 11 or or Diglett's tunnel and catch Diglett or Drowsy to, like just in case, like if you're that far ahead, um, just for like safety. If you're that far ahead, I think I would. I think one thing that um, I've actually done in PB attempts, and it actually has saved my run before, um, that I would consider doing is right here. Um, when Echi is about to fly from uh, Lavender Town to Celadon City to go down Route 17, um, you can actually peek over on Route 7 to see if that Abra can spawn. Um, it's not very far out of your way. Uh, it's obviously pretty rare, which is why most runners probably don't do it every run. Um, but it is an option you have as well if you're really, really stuck in a, in a bad situation. Um, like I'm thinking specifically like if Ghastly didn't spawn, Echi needs a pair of Pokemon, uh, that could be an option. It's like a five second check. Um, oh, yeah. that, chat's also mentioning is Venomoth a possibility. It's like, well, Echi, do, <laughs> Echi did not catch a Venonet yet, I don't think. So if he goes if he goes over to Route 15, catches, uses the Master Roll to catch a Venonet, they like, can use it as a rare candy, de definitely on the table. The, I mean, with, strats, with his luck, he's going to go over there and see a Scyther. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, these are strats that everybody's kind of, like, thought of, like, emergency backups. Like, you do get a Master Ball uh, after Silco. You tend to be well after everything is already caught, so that Master Ball isn't used on anything. But you do get one in your inventory, um, so you have that as an option. There is an extra Moonstone that you can get at the, uh, the Copycat House. Mm -hmm. um, and he's got Pokemon that can evolve via a Moonstone if he needs to. I mean, those are, they're out of the way. They're detours. But if you, you need to hit 50, it is just a hard requirement of the game. So at this stage, he's in the lead. You got it. You have to throw everything at the wall. And if it means doing emergencies at the end, uh, you just have to do that. All right. So uh, Edgy making his way over to Celadon City here. Um, officially done with Pikachu. Pikachu is no longer... Um, going to be... It's not even in the party anymore. Um, not going to be the main Pokemon anymore. This section of the run, especially for newer runners, can be a very tense section because you don't have a main Pokemon with you anymore. You are just with the Pokemon that need to evolve, your ride Pokemon, uh, and you're just going for the next uh, about 10, maybe like 10 to 15 minutes uh, with no main Pokemon at all. And if you happen to run into an optional trainer, it can be absolutely devastating. And we've seen that in this tournament. Almost everyone has done it on their first few runs. Um, these runners, you know, have done this so many times that they're not going to be, you know, worried about it too much. Uh, but it is something to mention if you are, you know, looking to pick up this game, as many people have because of the tournament. I think uh, this tournament has been phenomenal at getting people into the game, uh, both for actually doing the tournament, as well as just being a spectator and being like, huh, this looks kind of interesting, and then trying it out themselves. So... Yeah, and one of the one of the the beginner strats that we tell people is if you do hit an optional, you do always have the second controller, and you can two v one fights to kind of bail yourself out of that. The problem with that is that not this particular route, Route 17, 
but Route 21 in the water, that becomes not even an option anymore. And those Route 21 trainers are devastating. They are high level. They have good Pokemon, and you are the most underleveled compared to them as well. So even Route 21, and those swimmers have great vision too. They brought their prescription goggles with them. Um, but yeah, these runners are going to have no problem uh, dodging all of those optionals. They've done this quite literally more than a thousand times uh, between all of them. Oh, this is not a great start for Echi. Uh, he didn't good. see a single Pokemon in the first two patches of grass until that Ponyta. But remember, he needs everything. He needs that, Doduo, Psyduck, and Pidgey. Yeah, the nice thing, Pidgey, you can wait until Route 21 and get one in the grass. The downside to that is it will not evolve into Pidgeot. Um, so if you catch one here, it will evolve all the way up into Pidgeot, so it nets you three catches, um, as opposed to getting one later and only being able to get Pidgeotto. But you can always supplement that with something like a Magmar, so it's not the end of the world if it happens. Um, but that is probably the only catch that you can really skip here um, and reliably have something else that you can do with it. Oh, oh, okay. He got oh, the, there we he go. Saw the pit it is, wow, it is, he got Pidgeot. Oh my he god. Went, he <laughs> saw the Pidgey went back up and the Doduo spawn waiting for him. So pretty good situation. Remember, he's got one more to go in Psyduck. Yep, just Psyduck. Honestly, I would consider leaving without the Psyduck. Um, I think I wouldn't leave without two of the Pokemon, but without one of them, you can make it up with a Magmar and maybe backup Moonstone, Magmar and Tangela. Uh, you definitely have some options. Yeah, there, there are quite a few. I mean, it is funny, uh, when we first put the tracker on screen for you, when we were deciding which ones to show, because we're not showing all 150, obviously, one of the things we, we decided to add at the last second was uh, Victory Bell and Vile Plume. They are 1% wild spawns on Route 21, so it absolutely can spawn. It's just one of those weird things where there's a there's actually quite a few of these one-offs. There, you know, there's Vileplume, there's Chansey, there's Ditto, there's Magmar. And if you're in a situation where you need two of those, there are enough options um, to get you there, so long as they do spawn. The only reason why we don't plan on them is for two reasons. One, uh, they tend to be very difficult catches, uh, mm -hmm. even with the two controllers. Uh, and two, they are uh, uh, they they are lower, um, not lower catch rate. They are just the one. Lower spawn rate. Two in the first one. And lower spawn rate. That's what I was trying to think of. Like, Tangela is only a 5% to, to spawn. Ditto is 10% on the bottom floor of Mansion, 1% on the top floor. So they tend to not be super reliable catches. So we'll see. You've got two more patches of grass for Echi here. Um, another option you do have is uh, that whole repel lure strategy I mentioned earlier. You can absolutely do it here um, if you didn't use all your repels already on Route 10. You can, you can use them here. Um, it's not the best area to do it, uh, just because, you know, especially if you're only looking for one Pokemon out of the however many can spawn. Um, Echi opting not to do that, so down the Psyduck, and we are going to have some interesting ideas. Uh, Echi has not marked anything as planned yet, only at 48 planned, so... Yeah. And this is going to be a situation where obviously he thinks that waiting around on the route is just going to be too slow. Um, and he's correct about that. It's just going to be too slow to wait for something to potentially spawn, knowing that there are other spawns that are possible. But he did do a little zigzagging in that final patch of grass. Maybe get one or two more things to spawn just in case. Um, but Edgy will be coming up on Route 21 to get the star use. So we'll get our first indication of how good his end game might be barring the catch rate uh same stuff happening on amber's screen and amber again just having like no spawns i think it was a Rattata, maybe an eevee spawned in that first patch uh no mind of that uh actually would have been funny to see an eevee on etchy's screen i bet he would have caught it <laughs> there are three raspberries there what <laughs> yeah and i'll push it that headstrong is having a bit of bad luck right here uh, eevee had Made it on the Jesse and Jane three fight, uh, but for the uh, Weezing was scared. So, like, taking an extra few turns with that fight. Yeah, I gotta improvise when that happens. L likely got double targeted twice, um, which is almost just unrecoverable at that point uh, for EV side. Uh, so, you guys kind of have to improvise. Be like, I guess I'll drill run and X attack and see how I can clean this up. 
All right. All right. The all important Route 21. Uh, interesting to note that Echi has 35. He's actually had a lower catch count after C skim before. His EV world record has 33 yep. at C skim. Oh, and gets Tangela to spawn. Is he going to go for it? No, he's going to opt to catch the uh, the Staryu first here. So that... I think hopping on land was a mistake. I don't think he's actually going for that Tangela. I think he um, tried to turn around and just happened to land on land. So I don't even know if we'll see him go back on land. I wonder if the uh, other thing you might be thinking about, super rare thing to happen, if he catches the Staryu first and then gets Tangela experience and Magmar... He might be thinking he could save a candy on that yeah. Staryu. Maybe just saving, maybe. Candy. Saving a candy is definitely doable. Uh, would have to menu here. The Staryu did not go to the party. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Also, thank you, chat. Uh, I did not see it. It was a 1044 CP on the Staryu. Um, CP is a value that doesn't matter at all. So uh, we'll all. see what the stats look like. <laughs> yeah, my 1099 had like three uh, special attack IVs this morning. So... Uh, I, you gotta I actually see the stats first. Her. Okay, Amber going up. I did Amber already catch it? Yes, yes, she did. Uh, she did get a uh, uh, do duo, uh, but did get the side up here. So uh, nice big catch. Yeah. All right, Mike. Looks looks like he's gonna go for it. Yep. And she is gonna go for the Tangela on Route Twenty One. Uh, let's see if he goes to double Ultra Ball here as well, uh, because Tangela has a not a great catch rate. Just gonna opt to Ultra Great Ball with the Silver Ooh, Raz. Only, Ooh. only got a great throw on it. Uh, probably just rushed a little bit and still got the catch on that. Absolutely. So there's one of the two Pokemon he's missing. So any any single catch in Mansion suffices. Do you think he will go for Chansey if he sees it? No. No. I do not. <laughs> I think he goes for Magmar here. Um, I, I think Chansey is just too unlikely of a catch, especially at this high level, um, to really want to rely on, especially with something as common. Like, Magmar is not the most common Pokemon by any stretch, um, but it's common enough that you can kind of be like, all right, I don't need to catch this Pokemon that spawned. I can wait for this other one. Did get the uh, tentacle as well. Uh, is gonna use his last silver raspberry on it. Ooh, missed on the <laughs> initial <laughs> initial ultra ball throw. Um, Most control like, moment there. Was it the greatest of attempts? That was um, not me yeah. laughing at Edgy. That was me laughing at the game. This game sometimes <laughs> is just like you wanted to throw that too bad. Uh, I'll, so in a run yesterday, um. I had I did a double controller throw and the left ball dribbled out and the right ball yeeted. <laughs> and it was the it was the weirdest sequence I'd ever like I, usually like if they dribble out, they both will dribble out. Or you both no, one just like flopped and one just went towards the sky. And I was just like, what was that? <laughs> that was not the motion I made. Give a clip of that T Pat, please. Like, yeah, it was in it was point. in my marathon. Yeah, I was in my marathon run yesterday with Joker. By the way, we almost uh, world recorded in the middle of a marathon. Um, we we fumbled our final uh, trade, and we're plus thirty one seconds to. Uh, uh, no, it was just plus thirty to world record. Never mind that we like nicknamed everything, including our rivals and trainers and Pokemon. But uh, that was just the the last trade. All right, so we're going to get a first look at the Staryu here. We've got uh, 80, 89. So the speed is good. Speed, uh, is, speed good. is good enough for everything. The special attack leaves a little to be desired, but is absolutely not the worst ever. So yeah, totally fine. Yeah. Get, fortunately, it looks like it's getting AVs in special attack, though. Yes. Um, to kind of help out with that low base. Um, not, not an AV there on 46, but it looks like on 45 and... Uh, and 44 got an AB special attack. For, for reference, and I know this at the level 43 stats, the minimum in special attack is 72, and he had 79. Uh, and the minimum in speed is 79, and had well above that. I think it was 88 or 89. So um, the speed is the speed is actually fine. Um, 
can't do anything silly with it, though it is quite rare to do anything silly with the with extremely high speed. Especially um, in Pika. Yeah, but the better your special attack is, the more benefits you're going to get. Uh, just because of ranges, or being able to use Scald instead of Psychic, or be able to use Psychic instead of Hydro Pump. Uh, things like that, little advantages. Actually, not opting to catch any of those Magmars had. Am I missing something? Uh, he only, he doesn't have any uh, Raz like Silver Razes, so I think he might be avoiding them and going for a safety catch later. Possibly he doesn't have anything marked. Yeah, he still has forty nine planned and does not have Magmar marked. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Well. I'm sure he has we'll an idea. Just, I'm we'll just... just have to, yeah, he's probably cooking up something. Okay. Oh, because of party space. He needs the Grimer to go to his party. That's what it is. So he's catching the Grimer now, so it goes to his party, and then he's going to catch the Magmar to save an extra menu. So, yeah, nice little, uh, yeah, nice little optimization. Though it, it could have, it could have burned him. Um, but you're thinking that Grimer should be more than common enough to see one soon and then still get a Magmar to spawn, though it's not guaranteed. Um, yeah. An idea that you could do, if he's taking that gamble already, another gamble that you could do, uh, since he's out of those Silver Razes, is you can actually go down to the Ted fight and then pick up the Silver Razes that are behind the ladder. Well, we grab those in all obtainable Pokemon every every time. Um, you could opt to do that. A normal Raz plus a double Ultra Ball um, should be okay. He's actually going for an Ultra Great, which this is not... I the think it's just giving rate. him more. I think it's just giving him more opportunities with his Ultra Ball count, because obviously, if you use two Ultra Balls, that's like if you had only had two Ultra Balls left. Uh, I yeah, think he had four. I think it. I think he had four. He has he three now. Four now he has two. <laughs> now he has two. That means he can do this throw twice instead of just banking on one double Ultra throw. Uh, it also is a little bit quicker, uh, and he does get it on that once. All right. So Etchy is officially done. At the moment, Amber also gets a star. We can check the CP right off the bat here. It is 1057. Okay. Still a little below average, but maybe a bit better than Etchy's, though CP can feel like it's a lie sometimes. Absolutely. Uh, um, I can also compare, like, I had two back-to-back -back runs where I had a 1075 star, and it was the worst star of all time. It was minimum special attack. So it was just zero IV and it's speed. I was speed tied with the nine tails. So I was like, well, this is awful. This is like one of the worst stars ever. And it was technically above average CP. My very next run, I get like a 1060 something and it's one of the best stars I've ever had. It was near maximum special attack and speed was acceptable. So I'm just like, well, how was this a lower CP and just complete opposite ends of the spectrum? Uh, in terms of just how good it is. And it's just because only two stats matter, really. Yeah. Um, so, Hedron getting her star here. We have a 1057, so it's identical star to Amber's, um, which is kind of interesting. Uh, we're going to see Amber's <laughs> stats here. 8094, so incredibly fast. Um, and that's about the same special attack better. as Edgy. Yeah, just a little higher on the special attack, but yeah, very, very fast star. Um, another thing worth mentioning, so Etchy off of the Magmar catch was able to get two very, very crucial evolutions. Um, got both the Ponyta evolving into Rapidash, uh, which Rapidash is going to be the new ride Pokemon. You cannot ride Ponyta, so did need that evolution. Um, also got the uh, Doduo to evolve into Dodrio. Uh, Dodrio is a common Pokemon for us to use as the second player on another fight later on. Uh, so has that option over having to hit like an 85% uh, fire blast. So uh, that's a really nice one to see. Uh, and then we're going here into Scientist Ted. Yeah, Ted is a significant part of the run. So the previous Jesse and James fight, uh, their Pokemon were level 34. This Electrode is 45, an 11 level jump between back-to-back -back fights. And that is the, re the primary reason why uh, we main swap at this point because we need to match that level jump. Um, so usually Pikachu Eevee is about level 30, 31, maybe 32 on high experience runs. Yeah, that's not going to cut it against a level 45 Electrode. It is quite interesting that we get this Starmie and it's like it's an amazing Pokemon. has very few weaknesses, but the first thing we see is an Electric type that outspeeds it. 
Uh, electrodes are incredibly dangerous in this run. We see two of them, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Uh, and they both are very spooky Pokemon because of their Thunderbolt. If you get paralyzed, it can be a killer. All right. So Headstrong grabbing her final catch here with the coughing. Um, looking at her uh, tracker does not need to evolve the coughing. Actually, get in his pick of all the single stage evos because a ditto just spawned on the bottom floor. <laughs> and Headstrong, like Headstrong's coughing broke out there. Oh, going for Yolo. Actually, getting a little unlucky with that spinner cycle. Sometimes you can make the cycle before the spinner turns. Sometimes you can't. And then, um, way, way back in Cerulean City, uh, we mentioned that the Pika runners both picked up an Ether, while the uh, Eevee runner did not. Uh, there, right above us, is the Max Elixir. Um, so you'll see Headstrong pick that one up, but uh, Pikachu runners can save the like five seconds that it takes to go out of your way and pick it up, uh, because they already picked up an item earlier. Yeah, this this pace is still pretty decent for Echi. He's probably thinking like if he did all if he did all like PB strats, um, this could be in that realm of like a three double O three O one a bit more comfortably. Uh, but knowing that he's got a bit of a lead, we'll probably take some slightly safer measures. Uh, but still, still a very quick run. It's not going to be a world record pace. Um. Yeah, and so, uh, again, depending on if people have seen the run before or not, um, you might be curious why we are fighting Blaine, the canonically seventh gym leader, um, third. This is the third gym that we're facing. Uh, and it's because Kanto is super open world after the first two gyms. You can basically do everything you want. Um, and this just happens to be where we are when we have our new main Pokemon. Uh, and so we're going to go ahead and fight Blaine here and then make our way over to Lieutenant Surge and Erica, who is supposed to be three and four, uh, and just completely obliterate them with our new overleveled uh, main Pokemon. I just took a look at Headstrong's strats, uh, uh, stats. Uh, special attack is fine. It's kind of in the same realm as like Etchies. It's like, it's not terrible. Maybe a little bit something to be desired. Uh, speed, uh, I think he got a couple AVs in speed. Uh, and definitely um, hit that threshold, end up at 93 speed. If you see 89 or 90, you're typically fine, um, even before you evolve. Uh, so, okay. all, so I think all the stars are actually about the to same. Put it in a word. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they're definitely okay. Um, sounds like they're all about the same too, which is honestly like it's a bit unfortunate for the the racers that are a little bit behind because you kind of hope. Like you never want somebody to like do poorly, but you kind of hope that the person in the lead is going to have a worse star than you do, so that way you can try to save some time. Um, but luckily, everyone kind of has a similar star. Um, all this mediocre special attack, um, pretty good speed. Speed's basically only going to be relevant for this fight here. The Rapidash has 117 speed. You can see Etchy outspeeding here. Uh, and the Ninetales has 113, which is only a problem if you have like the worst possible speed. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's there been two different versions of how to level up Starmie. Uh, you'll either hear us say something like 3 plus 1 or 2 plus 2. We use four total rare candies. Um, typically, the strat is you pick up the Route 6 rare candy uh, and use that in the initial menu, making it 3 at first and then 1 later. So you'll hit level 46. Uh, and it just... 3 plus 1 really bails out some really bad stars. Uh, particularly on the speed side, but also on the special attack side uh, for Blaine, uh, because with minimum uh, with minimum speed, you are speed tied with Nine Tails and thus outsped by Rapidash. Uh, with minimum special attack, the Nine Tails is a range. Uh, it's a 14 and 16 range. If you go up to 46, it's still a 13 and 16 range. Uh, if you're still 45. Um, so just having that extra level for Blaine specifically can really bail out those bad stars. Uh, if you're really good, it kind of doesn't make a whole lot of a difference at the end of the day. Yeah, and you might be wondering why would you not always do three plus one? Um, like having that extra power could be beneficial. Um, the main difference between the two is the amount of friendship that you end up with. So 
We'll talk a lot more about friendship later on because it'll be way more relevant in the Elite Four. Um, but basically, when you have high enough friendship, you'll start to waste a little bit of time because there are extra animations. And so by having two plus two, you actually end up with about... Uh, one second. I actually have the numbers. <laughs> you, you definitely have a spreadsheet for this. I do have a spreadsheet for it. So you end up with three less friendship overall. Um, and that basically makes it so you are guaranteed to almost never end up with turnarounds, um, the basically negative side effect. You're almost never going to have it a fight early, where with three plus one, if you use like two extra X items over the, the standard minimum that you would use, uh, then you'll end up with these extra extra animations. So, um, yeah, and it will you, cost you eight or 10 seconds on Bruno specifically. Yeah, um, so which very well can happen. Like, you know, you die in a weird spot and you have to reset up. Well, that's your X items that you've uh, tacked on in that situation. Yeah. Uh, well, the and, other weird, the other small, small thing is that it does take a little bit of extra time to get the Route 6 candy versus the extra Mansion candy. So you're trading off a couple extra seconds. Um, but the benefit of doing that is that you're actually giving Route 6 a chance to actually spawn things. Just a, very, just a notorious route for not spawning correctly, particularly unlured. It's just weird that like any route in the game will just spawn Pokemon naturally, even unlured. But Route 6, for some reason, is kind of pitiful in that regard. Uh, so just giving it an extra chance to actually populate um, benefits the run. So it's worth those couple extra seconds in a variety of ways. Yeah, we have a question in chat. Is there ever a situation to do 4 plus 0? Uh, so 4 plus 0 is not possible in the Eevee version. You can do it in Pikachu just because you can skip using the rare candy on the uh, Ponyta. Um, but 4 plus 0 doesn't quite hit the right level ups. Um, like you, the one of the, the main level thresholds we have is like level 49 after Sabrina. That's what you candy to. You're actually just shy of level 49. Um, and it probably impacts a couple other things. Uh, it ends up giving you way more friendship as well. So you'll end up with those turnarounds on Bruno. Um, I don't really think there's any situation where I would rather have four plus zero. Um, like you would do a little bit more damage on like Archer two, but that isn't really relevant. So yeah, I don't think you would ever do it. Yeah, I, I find that um, if you're using that route, you're just gaining a little less experience or the amount of experience you need for that last level up uh, is just a little bit more. So you're just less likely to hit 49 after Sabrina. You're more likely to have to uh, like wait to do that fancy menu until after Kaden. Um, but yeah, the friendship things uh, matter in that regard. I think I just find I just find this incredible that uh, that Echi went from a 28 rock tunnel exit and missing Psyduck to still having about as clean of a catch route as one can ask for. Like, to, like I can't imagine like his heart rates or his blood pressure just thinking, man, I need everything to spawn. I need everything to spawn. Otherwise, I have to do emergencies. And to get the Tangela and the Magmar in probably the best case scenarios, the way that they spawned, um, was just super beneficial for that late game. All right, here, so here we see like Echi, it, Amber, Headshot, like all, all in different parts of like the now, like this, this gym leader bliss, like so Ed. So Edgy like is now starting the uh, the the maze in uh, Celadon. Amber's just finishing up with Surge and Headstrong just finishing up with Blaze. Um, like to Blaine. Uh, so yeah, it's just like one point of run where you just like fight three gym leaders in a row. Mm -hmm. um, just like going from two badges up to five within a matter of ten minutes. Yeah, and, it, and, it, and it's because this game doesn't use HMs in the traditional way anymore. They're now those secret techniques that Eevee and Pikachu can just use. And when I say just use, I mean just use. You don't have to have the appropriate gym badge to match the HM for usage. And that's what makes Kanto, which was already fairly open world, now almost completely open world. That's why gym badges three through seven can be done in any order you want them to. 
So it ends up being most optimal to just take care of Blaine while you're in Cinnabar and you just uh, got the Starmie to have the super effective type matchup against it. Uh, and then we save Koga for last because Koga is what has that 50 Pokemon gym requirement. So we delay that as much as possible to get all these last Pokemon that we caught that last level to get them evolved. So for example, an Echi still needs to wait for the Grimer and the Tentacool to evolve. Uh, for, for Amber, it's just Grimer. Uh, and Headstrong is actually completely finished with evolutions. It's worth noting that for as low as Echi's catch route was, Headstrong's was just as high. Mm -hmm. So Headstrong just didn't have to catch all that many endgame Pokemon, period, and was able to just drop them all. In fact, Headstrong caught Coughing and already deposited it because it doesn't need to evolve at all. Um, yeah, it, ended up on that kind of odd catch count, but uh, yeah, caught the caught the Psyduck from earlier. Didn't need that for Golduck in the end. Caught a Coughing, but does, doesn't need it to evolve. Uh, and ended up getting the Ghastly as well. So skip Tentacool. Um... Yeah, just everything just kind of falling in line. So Headstrong's not only completely done with catches, but is also completely done with evolutions. Just going to pick up those two uh, last gift Pokemon after the Silphco sequence. All right. So Echi going to uh, throw the Dodrio into slot two. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, getting that evolution early is nice. Sometimes, depending on the amount of Pokemon that you're catching, Doduo hasn't evolved yet. Um, and if you decide to do this fight with Doduo, you can end up with a range. Um, but this fight here, entering Sylphco, is uh, probably the best representation I think that we have for why two controllers are so powerful in battle. Um, so most of the other fights that we've seen um, have been, you know, our Pikachu or our Eevee, uh, or the, the Nidoking in some cases, uh, is our main attacker, and we're just going to feed it X items with the other trainer. Um, in this fight, you kind of have to do a bit of both. Uh, Starmie is a phenomenal Pokemon. It's a water psychic Pokemon uh, with electric coverage now. Uh, but there is like one typing in the game that really walls it, and that is grass and psychic Pokemon. Um, and so a grass psychic Pokemon like Executor, which Blue, who we're about to fight here, has, um, you just can't do anything to with the Starmie. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use an X attack on the Starmie's turn into the Dodrio. Dodrio is going to Drill Peck and take care of the Executor. Um, and then you'll be able to, on the next turn, when Charizard comes out, use Scald and then an X special attack from the Dodrio's turn onto the Starmie. Um, so it's a great representation, like I said, of these two controller battles. Um, it's one of the first battles that, you know, we really routed once two controllers became a thing. Uh, and it's just... I just love this fight. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I also think it's a bit of ironic that like Executor, who probably has the actually most weaknesses in the game, is mm -hmm. the one thing that completely wall start. Um, so you have to pretty much use uh, another Pokemon to defeat it. But yeah, and you might see like other trainers to use a like, different Pokemon. So another common Pokemon to use uh, for this fight is Rapidash, and so you use an X Special Attack and use Fire Blast. Um, of course, like Fire Blast, as we all know, has a chance of missing. So like you're introducing risk into the run. Um, more recently, other tr other people have like gone for Magmar Strats if you end up in a situation where you need to catch one. Um, because like Magmar, you can use either an X Attack or an X Special Attack and use Fire Punch or um, flamethrower in that situation so like multiple ways to get around it but both involve using a pokemon that does super effective damage to the executor and he did catch magmar this run yeah, so yeah. It, it, it's not in this party so all right so etchy getting the grimer evolution that officially puts etchy and amber uh there's still one evolution behind headstrong but they are on the same um pokemon count now so we can get a accurate representation of how far ahead Echi actually is and it's basically just this blue fight so even though we were kind of you know gassing Echi up saying you know he's you know so far ahead and all this other stuff like it's only one fight realistically and a fight's only about a minute so there's a lot of things that can happen this race is still you know up in the air it's definitely Echi's uh right now but uh anything can change especially on this next fight yeah I think a lot of t Amber gained a lot of time by not having to catch as many things on the like on the east game that's on route 17 uh route 21 and in mansion just like 
not having to catch things like summon like summoning the summoning controller, uh, having a breakout on Magmar. Like right? this, those are mm -hmm. all things that cost catch you some time there. Yeah, um, I was just gonna say those those bad catches can cost you time just by flipping you know menu scripts like having to hit hit silver raz and getting a breakout going on and off the land, land on like yep. in that spot i think that's that in itself was like seven small, or eight seconds it's like a small little, small little move. all right yeah we got go. the archer fight here the true double Ooh, and a really oh, bad no. spur for edgy it's paralysis <laughs> turn one that can turn out really ugly here um, because you just don't have any good opportunity to get rid of the paralysis here. And it just uh, did, do... it did just over half, so he has to heal here. Can't heal the paralysis. Yeah, you almost always have to super potion after a thunderbolt. Oh, doesn't even have anything to heal the paralysis with. Getting the self-destruct there is very, very nice. Uh, no, he, 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 wait, did he use a shower? The other, uh, full He used it on Blaine. He used it on Blaine. Okay. Then yeah. he doesn't have anything. Oh, but he, he gets, going down gets... is very big. Yeah, so two good things happened here was one, he did hit through paralysis on that first turn because you can get paralyzed into fully paralyzed like in one swoop. So he did get rid of the muck, which is extremely important. And then it really helped out that the Cubone did target uh, a Bone Meringue and hit uh, to KO the Raticate after the self-destruct. So if all goes well, this is still a four turn for Echi. I mean, it has to has to hit through this dark pulse flinch chance. Yeah, I think barely. He outsped. I think you outspeed that. He still wow. outsped it wow. at uh, at half. Uh, so, at the, uh, at the uh, half if you don't speed. believe in uh, plot armor now, uh, believe it. <laughs> wow, uh, getting paralyzed and hitting through paralysis all four times and still getting the optimal four turn is incredible. What? Talk about Why is Weezing so luck? slow? I'm it so mad. <laughs> uh, I didn't particularly see, see how uh, Amber's start was, um, but the Raticate is still on the field. Uh, and this is always the problem with the double fight is that Rival tends to have pretty bad AI, like will opt to just focus energy for no reason, and it just doesn't help you at all. Yeah, and unfortunately, Amber is going to have to heal here on this last turn. Um, just to make sure that nothing funny happens. There is a there is an okay chance that uh, we could still see a Bone Meringue here. Um, the Cubone will have to go for Bone Meringue and not Headbutts. Uh, and it does, so... Yeah. The fight does finish. So was that, what, a five turn, I assume? I think it was five. Um, yeah, the, the Headbutt... So, the part... The... Your partner in that fight is your rival, and your rival will go for whatever move is best against whichever Pokemon he's targeting. Um, and so you should only ever see Headbutt if the we uh, Golbat is on the field because Bone Meringue doesn't hit the Golbat. Um, but yeah, the the other problem is Bone Meringue can miss, so uh, you could you could be guaranteed to see Bone Meringue in a position like that, but still have it not actually go through. So very nice to see that finish up there. Uh, Etchy going on to the fourth and final Jesse and James fight. This one is not very notable, especially compared to the last two. Uh, this is just a standard two-turn fight. Uh, if Starmie had spread Psychic, then it would be a one-turn fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's worth noting for this Weezing um, and, and some of the others that we see, the Weezing does know Thunderbolts. So you still can get um, paralyzed, uh, but it's not super noteworthy for this fight because you will get a chance to uh, heal it off. And yeah, even though you don't have the paralyzed heals to have that second, uh, either the pewter crunchies um, would well, suffice for that. Etchy actually doesn't have either of them, so the Dodrio getting paralyzed there is way better than the, the Starmie. <laughs> All right, so actually still kind of maintaining that one fight ahead lead over Amber. Uh, Amber did have a worse Archer, even though Etchy got turn one paralyzed and somehow Amber still had a worse Archer, uh, even though it was kind of a standard one. So uh, Etchy did save a little bit of time there. One fight ahead, but it's a double turn. It's a double battle fight. So uh, 
so yeah, it'll be interesting to see. We're officially in what we would consider late game, so this will be interesting. Um, Giovanni here, again, kind of like the Jesse and James fight, way less notable than the one in Rocket Hideout. Um, this is a standard uh, use an X special because you're going to get fake out anyways, and then Scald to finish out the fight. Yeah, you can see that. This, this is Starmie at its best. Just kind of cleaning up everything, no problems. Uh, so aside from that initial Ted fight uh, and, the, and the other Electrode that we saw on Archer, uh, those are only really the two... Um, the two problematic things for Starmie early on, uh, though we'll see those late game fights uh, provide their own challenges. All right, Headstrong also getting through Archer. Love to see it. Um, so something that will be noteworthy here. Um, so we're going to pick up our last two Pokemon. Uh, Etchy's going to grab the Master Ball first. It's a required pickup here in uh, Pokemon Let's Go compared to the originals. And then it's going to go to Floor 7 to grab a Lapras from uh, one of the workers here at Sylphco. And then outside to the Pokemon Center to gain a Porygon from another Sylphco worker. Uh, after that, he's going to go to the Saffron Pokemart and do some shopping. And what he buys is going to be very important for us to take note of uh, because it kind of indicates what he's thinking in terms of late game strategies. So there's two ways to get through the Elite Four. One of them involves doing the sort of standard any percent, I'm going for a PB, I'm going for world record kind of strategies um, that are a little bit riskier. You have to risk a couple of crits, a couple of bad fights. Um, and if he's going for those, you'll see him buy things like X Special Defense. Um, and if you're going for the safer var variants of those fights, you're actually going to skip those X Special Defense altogether because you're going to be too controllering all of those dangerous fights. Um, it's a bit counterintuitive to think that you skip the defense and yeah. the special defense in the safe version, but it's because the two controller fight does not need them. Uh, so as you said that, I was just about to... Uh, see the time difference between the two runners. It is at 64 seconds between okay. Echi and Amber right now. I uh, just measured it on that last teleporter pad that we saw uh, Amber hit. And the runners that have been doing practice races uh, have also gained a bit of experience kind of in that race routing, knowing when to kind of look over, look at the screen, see how far ahead or behind you are. And that very well at this moment could influence that decision. That minute mark is just about that threshold between just opting for completely safe strats or not. I don't think he does it. I think he I think he does standard shopping here. Um, just because you, you don't know what's going to happen in Giovanni's gym. You don't know what's going to happen in Victory Road with Caroline. Um, there's a lot of things that can go wrong still. So I think you've got to plan Ooh. to do the faster <laughs> strategies and then sort of reassess later on. Uh, funny enough, it was right at the last second. So he s initially skipped the special defense. I'm like, ah, he's going safe. And then bought it on that second time I, through the menu. So I think I that's for it. that. That's, did, that's for menu optimization purposes. Did um, Echi uh, buy an X defense here? No. He did, he did not. not. So he, he will um, be two seeing the Giovanni fight for sure. Yes. Then. Right. And that was a decision he made way back in that pewter mart. Um, it's just something that, that Pika does is they just will commit to that X Defender nut way in that first shop of the game. Um, so that he was committal to. Yeah, I guess technically you, you could buy the X Defend here, um, but it does make for a less optimal menu. It's still, still go for Risky. And of course, Amber, we will definitely see um, this menu uh, pan out like this. See, this is what I thought. It doesn't. It doesn't lose you any. Um, it doesn't lose you any menu inputs um, to buy the X special defend first over the. X so, speed. It, it makes it so the X speeds are last in your inventory. So you have to do a double swap after the gym. 
That's what um, it is. But Amber, Amber actually bought the X Special Defense first because they also bought the X Defend after. And so the X Defend is going to be the final slot. So it's still only one swap to get the you know X Specials to the, the bottom spot. Um, but Amber's going to be able to do one controller, Giovanni, where Echi is going to be forced to do two controller. And while 90% of the time, two controller works out really well, uh, there is that 10% chance that you could just lose you know, 15 seconds or so. So we'll have to see how that goes. Um, but before then, Echi is on the Sabrina fight. Sabrina is actually probably the most difficult of the gym leaders in terms of just the amount of setup you have Ooh. to do. Pause, um, we got Reflect turn one. And then Psychic turn two, he gets Light Screen skip. Echi saves and another it. two turns over the standard Sabrina fights. That's pretty wild, yeah. Yeah, I've ne I've actually never seen Light Screen skip. Like all the runs I've done, they never have seen it. Ah, uh -huh, funny story. Uh, I got it in my last run and then missed the uh, missed KOing the Mr. Mime, and then it used it turn three, uh, which outright loses four turns. Yeah. Yeah, it is one of those things. If you have a bad enough star, you should be hydro pumping there. Um, but it's one of those situations. It's not written in the notes because like it never happens. So getting it to happen there is just like like Etchy said. Etchy's the one who said it in chat. It is plot armor at this point. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think he just uh, finally realizes that the RNG is completely swung in his favor because getting light screen skip, well, yeah, it just happened for Etchy, is incredibly rare. It probably happens one out of every 50 runs or so. I'm oh, even less, that's than like, that. less than that. Yeah, I, it's, it's I have run this game. Incredibly rare. I've been running this game on and off since November 2018, and I have never gotten it myself. I have finished so many runs of this game. <laughs> I have se I have seen it three times, um, but I did fail to KO the Mr. Mime twice, and I got it turn three. Uh, so I've only successfully done it once in total. So yeah, so what happens is usually that Sabrina fight is eight turns. If you get light screen turn two, it's nine turns. But if you skip it, it's just a six turn fight. Uh, so weirdly enough, like getting no light screen saves two turns, not just one. All right, so Etchy doing a little bit of menuing there. Uh, using that last rare candy, this gets us to level 49. More importantly, it gets us to level 50 for a Kangaskhan and 53 for a Dragonite. Um, and then also depositing all the Pokemon. Uh, this is officially the point of the run where you have to have 50 Pokemon. If you don't have 50 Pokemon, you have to take the Walk of Shame over to Route 15, catch a Venonat, and do all sorts of other stuff. Um, because we're about to go into Koga's Gym, which is what this run is basically based around. And uh, Koga's Gym is not just a hassle because of the amount of Pokemon you have to catch throughout the entire run, uh, but it's also one of the like, highest variance gyms in this game. Uh, absolutely, actually. It's not even one of it's It's absolutely the highest variance you have in a gym, uh, just because every Pokemon in this gym both, knows both Toxic and Protect. You should only ever see Toxic from the lead Pokemon, because you're going to be using an X special attack on them, uh, and then sort of sweeping the team. But every Pokemon can protect in front of you, so optimally, this is like a eight-turn gym. Well, actually, optimally, optimally, it's a seven-turn gym. Um, but the best you can hope for is an eight-turn gym. It could be as bad as like a almost twenty turns, just depending yeah. on the luck you get. I would say that mo if most people get a ten-turn gym, they're usually pretty happy. Yes. And no noting that, oh, it could have gone better, but I won't complain about ten. But if you get 11, you're like, eh, it really should have gone better. So it kind of teeters on the plus or the minus side of, of okay. Uh, Caden is notable, um, not because of just Toxic Protect, uh, but it also that Buck knows the move Minimize. Uh, thankfully for Etchy, did not see Minimize, a uh, move that just boosts evasion. And then you can just start missing, and then bad things start happening, uh, especially if it stacks those minimizes. Uh, but Echi about had as perfect as a Caden as possible, a three turn, not seeing Protect on the Beedrill, and seeing Protect on the setup turn for the Muck. So, so far, so good. 
I'm waiting for a turn one explosion from uh, Weezing. Yeah. That's why I was, that's why I had to change it from an eight turn optimally to actually in seven turns. <laughs> yeah, so in set so usually what you hope for is again turn one protect on your setup turn and then sweep without ever seeing it again. That's a five turn fight. But there is another very small percentage chance that Koga can lead explosion, which tends to not even kill unless it crits. Uh, and in that case, you're actually a little less likely to even see Protect on the other Pokemon, because Koga is a little bit more incentivized to actually go for the KO instead of stalling for Protect as well. Oh, we see a Minimize uh, on, on Amber side, we did see the Minimize. Into Protect, okay. Into so Protect. That's... All right, hit through. Uh, we got a Toxic on Echi's side, uh, so not too much trolling there. Uh, we'll see how the rest of the fight goes. Yeah, and then got Protect on the uh, heal turn. Yeah. All right, no Protect there from the Beedrill for Amber, so worse fight overall than Echi's, but still not too, too bad. Could have been a whole lot worse, especially with that turn one minimized. No Protect from the Venomoth for Echi. Kind of hanging on every move here. Uh, the Protect Golbat does Golbat. use Protect. How often have you seen double Protect for many of these mons? It's I it's feel it's pretty more than rare. You think. I think it's most likely to happen with the Muck. Yes, if it's gonna be anything, it's usually the Muck. Um, which is unfortunate because Muck is the only Pokemon that you always have to use Psychic, and your Psychic PP is just a little bit tight in this section um depending on when you decide to use your elixir some people are going to use it uh, earlier on some people are going to delay it a little bit longer um so it really that like the, the best place for fight for etchy so 10 total turns in the gym which again is on that like okay good enough yeah um yeah so the the best place in terms of safety to use your elixir is actually between kaden and koga um but you just like you're not going to menu there typically. So you have to kind of decide, do I want to do it early and think I'm going to get, you know, a decent Koga's gym? Do I do it later? Um, and, you know, essentially have an extra heal menu. You're still in your menu, but you have to go into the healing box, um, you Which know, just to Amber. heal your PP. So I don't I don't believe Amber uh, used the elixir early. If not, then this is actually spooky because Amber only has three psychics remaining. But I think Amber delayed because that seems. I think Amber delayed. Low. And if Amber did delay, this is actually a decent amount. Uh, with that protect there, I think it ruins it. Yeah. I, so I think if you have up... ten scalds and if you have ten scalds and psychic left, you can actually delay all the way and then like elixir during rival five. Although that's not really worth it in Pika because you always have to X speed in Pika. So never mind. Uh, in this case, Amber had a 12-turn gym, so again, just another two turns slower uh, for the player behind. Uh, again, I just think it just comes down... It, it's things that are RNG that you don't plan for. It's not that Amber's playing riskier and getting punished. Amber's just getting RNG bullied uh, compared to compared to Echi, and I think that gap is going to be a little bit wider. Um, I am just going to double-check. Things that... Seconds here. Uh, things that are in your control, Etchy completely messing up approaching the gym there by going in the middle of the uh, walkway and wasting two seconds to have the rival walk down to you. Again, small small optimizations that you expect from top <laughs> runners. <laughs> we, um, we joke about it, but it it does it is things that we think about. Uh, Headstrong actually getting a really unlucky Caden there. Uh, we were kind of focusing on the other two just because they're so close, but uh, that was really unfortunate to see. Uh, that's kind of almost as bad as that fight can go. All right. Um, both runners, uh, Echi and Amber, using a Repel. Uh, now that we're through Koga's Gym, we don't need to see any more Pokemon. In fact, we would like to avoid them. So just going to have a Repel up for the rest of the game. Uh, and then make our way into the final gym. So what was the difference when I said after Silphco? It was, it was 64 60. seconds. Yeah, that has swelled to 81 seconds now. This is uh, in the realm. It's getting well, to can, the realm you can take of... Off two of those. You can take off two of those seconds because that's not accounted for the uh, 
uh, the messing up of the uh, the rival talking. So 79. <laughs> yeah, uh, that that is in the realm of doing everything safe and there being no way to catch up. Uh, it's not quite there. Caroline still exists, um, as well as some pretty niche uh, Naomi things that can happen. But it is it's getting close. So you'll probably see a two controller Samuel from Echi. Um, maybe not. He likes to he likes to play risky in the end game for some reason. Maybe um, he should just do it for content. If you're listening, content, content is important. <laughs> yeah, you'll probably see the two controller Samuel. You'll definitely see the two controller Giovanni, like we mentioned. Uh, even if the Rapidash lives on Giovanni, it'll be a you know, it'll only be like 20 of those 79 seconds at most. I think it's even less because it's 20 for champion. And Champion's a longer fight, so it's probably like 15. Yeah, I just had an idea. Good. I don't like that. Um, Etchy typing in chat. Just We're not I putting a wheel on idea. stream. <laughs> There's no more wheels, okay, chat? <laughs> Done. Well, I mean, we did have that one wheel for... Uh, for up around five, and it was, if I remember this correctly, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, it was Etchy versus Has versus Plot Armor. Yes, it uh, was. I think <laughs> Plot Armor won that race because we are definitely seeing Plot Armor completely dominating this round six grand finals. Uh, you want to know a funny story, uh, Etiquette? Uh, in my diploma run yesterday, uh, since I had an extra level going into Giovanni's gym, I was actually level 50 for Samuel. I got to psychic the I got to psychic the Nido King. Yep, is it's actually the same threshold to guarantee psychic? No, for psychic to be better than Hydro Pump, it's the same threshold as the psychic stomp threshold with level 49. I think it's like 138 or something like that. Yeah, I think I I had 141. Jesus. Yeah, uh, and it was 153 or 154 finishing the game. Just one level higher, though. Yeah. And we see Edgy go for the two controller uh, fight on Giovanni. So we're going to see turn one, like he's going to sacrifice his Rapidash to the poor Earthquake from the Trio. But in exchange, um, he will get like a skull off without having to one X defend and to just, like, just essentially just take turns and risk crits. Unfortunately, that means after the fight, he will have to heal the Rapidash and uh, essentially use, uh, like, heal the Star Army too. Um, but it's, it's worth it for the safety of this strategy. Yeah, especially when you have a lead like this. Um, like, a completely risky, like a PB strat versus the safe strats for this gym. Um, can net Amber like 25 or so seconds back uh, in that 20 to 25 range? Uh, like just between the one controller Samuel and the one controller Giovanni. Um, so we will see Amber catch back up a little bit, barring, you know, any kind of nasty crits on this Giovanni fight. But this is one of the four, quote, dangerous fights. Yes, Archer is the most annoying fight of the game. But Giovanni starts a sequence where Giovanni, Agatha, Lance, and Champion are really the four fights that can crit kill you. Uh, whereas everything else in the game, even a nasty crit is kind of recoverable. Mm. Uh, it becomes less so starting with this fight. So really important fight on Amber's screen right now. Right, yeah. So first turn you're gonna see Amber use an X Defend. Um, so if you're going to get crit, this would be the one turn that would possibly be okay to have it. Like that? Which like happened! That. <laughs> yep. Because you do yeah, survive, you can, but... Yeah, you can live in full. Commentator's curse. But you, it only costs a turn. Alright, now you're all set up, so you go. You have to X defend because the Dug Trio is faster. 28 HP, uh, plus the level up, that's going to be safe for Pidgeot's uh, quick attack, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah, that will so. be safe for a quick attack. So we'll be able to see Amber go straight out of here without doing the menu that we currently see Etchy doing. Um, and yeah, another thing that's worth mentioning about the different strategies here. Um, so I mentioned earlier about the friendship and how you really want to like not use too many extra X specials and things like that. 
there are too many extra X items to gain the friendship. Um, if you do the standard three plus one strategies and have to go to plus six on Lorelei, which a lot of stars have to, um, if you use even one extra X item, you will end up with those extra turnaround animations on Bruno. Um, so Etchy did the two controller Samuel, which is an extra X special, but was able to save the X defense on Giovanni. So it's actually still a net zero. Um, and that extra, you know, extra X item for that extra turnarounds isn't going to happen. Um, you know, it is possible still with like Naomi, for example, you can sometimes want to use two X specials. So still has an opportunity to use an extra one, but will most likely be safe there. Uh, and according to Kahuna Pat in chat, we've got, it looks like a 78 second difference between the two. Um, so was able to save some time by using one controller, but obviously lost a little bit of time because of the critical hit on turn one. So it didn't yeah, get the full benefit. Yeah, Ember will gain a little bit of time back here just because like she didn't have to heal mm -hmm. um, after the battle. So that'll, that'll be about like seven or eight seconds. So yeah, say I was about... gonna say it's a, it's a bit closer to 70 uh, on the gym exit uh, because there was that extra menu on the etchy side. Etchy talked to Alexa. <laughs> uh, funny enough, like one of the strats that you can do, but only on the EV side, is that since Rival uh, has Jolteon instead of Raichu, uh, if you're a Pika player, uh, the Jolteon has much, much higher speed. Uh, so it is never possible for the Starmie to outspeed the Jolteon, but it is if it's the Raichu. So there are some kind of niche strats that you can do for the this rival five uh fight but it's really only possible for the ev side where you can one controller you do have to do some more risks you do have to uh risk getting sand attacked and you have to risk hitting a hydro pump uh, i don't think headstrong speed is even at that threshold it's good but i don't think it's quite that great uh, but instead i think we'll just uh we'll just see some normal risky stuff through the, like the risk is only going to pick up on Amber's side uh, from Victory Road through the Elite Four because this is where the risks can start being utilized. Because usually Starmie is just like, I'm just going to pound everything. I'm just going to 100% guaranteed KO everything in my way. But now we're starting to get to the point of the run where Scalds might not be good enough. Hydro pumps are going to be a bit more required, and some and in this next case, Hydro Pump can be a range. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how safe Etchy wants to play through this section versus how risky Amber wants to go at the same time. Yeah, I think the, the two main risks that I can see, I guess three main risks um, that I can see Amber doing uh, just to try and save like any crumb of time are going to be one controller Naomi, which is the next battle that you're going to see Etchy going into very shortly. Um, Going to plus four on Lorelei, uh, which is something that good stars can do. I don't think anyone's star is really good enough to justify doing it. Um, so Amber would have to do it as sort of like a last resort kind of thing. Uh, and the final thing, which is uh, something you really don't want to have to do, but at this point, with everything on the line, um, you might want to consider is outright skipping the full restore uh, and doing the standard Agatha fight and just praying for that power of love which is only a 36% chance of activation because you get two opportunities at 20% apiece. Or, I mean, there's also this weird thing that can happen where you get crunch turn one. You technically don't need the full restore, but it's actually a full turn slower anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is possible. So we have Etchy. Yeah. I think he's doing the funny strat. This is something that I actually prompted Etchy to say out loud during the GDQ appearance so I could get the uh, the strat. You actually go in one controller and scald turn one. Why do you do that? Because plus zero scald and a plus two scald always kill. And if you get this burn, you are allowed to stay in the fight one controller. Uh, so it is a four turn one controller fight versus what could have been a two turn two controller fight, but hydro pumps are range. So he avoids even clicking hydro pump at all uh, and also got the 30% burn. Again, another lucky thing that happened for Etchy. If the burn doesn't happen, you just summon the second controller at that point, and 
just kind of move on with your day. It's completely safe, but he also saves another single controller turn. Uh, meanwhile, Amber, I think this is an admission of defeat. I don't know about you. Amber is going into this fight two controllers, so it's not one controller in Naomi. Yeah, I, I I think I respect this. Um, I think if I remember correctly, there are prizes for uh getting second and third place. So, um, you know, trying to lock in a second place here, I think is completely fine. Um, you're kind of in that. You know, we've been talking earlier about like, oh, this 60 second time frame is kind of where you think you can actually make up that time. Uh, being close to 70 seconds after the final gym, really the only spot of RNG left for Echi is going to be this Caroline fight, which is the fight after this one, um, that can really troll you. So even uh, dodges I, hypnosis on Nelson. So I, I, I think this is totally fine. Yeah, I, I just think everything is going Echi's way right now. This is, I mean, <laughs> every little piece of RNG has been just about perfect. Getting the 30% burn, getting the hypnosis dodge, which is only 25%. Hypnosis is like 60% accurate. Correct. I yeah, thought it was that, 75, but yeah, yeah. Be crazy that. yeah. But Skull is not 30% burn. It's like it's about 100 percent especially even when the, the use of even the, the, the spinner, spinner. Even the spinner was looking appropriately to the right and not up. It's just every little thing. Uh is just kind of lining up here. I, I, the only time I've ever seen the cycle that way is if it is in a mount skip run where uh, where you actually don't fight that trainer. So that's the first time I've seen the spinner actually looking to the right already. And see on Amber's screen, hypnosis, no dodge. So lost another turn. So yeah, so this one, <laughs> so, so I think the ball's completely in Echi's court as he does Alexa skip, should be no problem. Ooh, takes a second stab at it. That was awfully close. That was close. And then look at how safe he talks to Caroline just to, just to guarantee he never talks to Colby ever again. Uh, by the way, you fight this trainer and not the other one because Colby leads an Electrode. And uh, based on the other two electrodes that we saw, that's kind of bad. Uh, so we opt to fight the Jinx here, which we do have to hit a Hydro Pump on, which, funny enough, will be the first Hydro Pump he clicks of the run. And, and he, he gets, gets it. it. I actually think Kobe has uh, four Pokemon, too. <laughs> yeah, Kobe, Kobe does have oh. more Pokemon and leads electrodes, so it's very bad. So that was that was realistically kind of the last pain point of RNG uh, that could happen for Echi. If he does co things completely safe through uh, uh, through the Elite Four, uh, this sh this should be a relatively short putt for the world record holder. Uh, we'll see if new uh, we'll see if New Amber can also get a uh, successful Alexa skip. Uh, gets it first try. A little bit of a different done. setup. And we'll have another Hydro Pump uh, coming Amber's way here. They were different. Uh, also on uh, on a Hydro Pump fight. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say they're different Ace Trainers, but that was a beautifully synchronized Ace Trainer swoop in between yeah. Amber and Headstrong there. Ah, uh, Amber got put to sleep again, this time with Lovely Kiss. Is that the one with 75% uh, accuracy? That That's the one with 75, I think. Yeah. That's what it was. And missed with the hydro pump. Ugh. But got it that time. Yeah, Amber not exactly super fond of Caroline. Um, Amber was a little bit behind me in our round three race and got totally bodied by Caroline. Uh, I know the feeling because it happened to me in my round two race against Ergo. Uh, we kind of deemed it the big three. It was uh, Archer, Caden, Caroline ended up being the biggest RNG points of the run, uh, especially with the safe strats developed. 
Uh, there are the four dangerous fights, but if you're doing it safe, it was really just those three that had any kind of, like, nasty variants to them. All right, so Etchy getting through Dawson here. Um, then we'll see if he decides to pick up the full restore. Um, believe it or not, kind of like the X Special Defense, if you don't pick up the full restore, it means you're doing the safe strats. <laughs> um, but you're either doing it very safe or very risky. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll see. Uh, I'm not sure if Echi is, uh, you know, been acquainted with the Lapras strats um, that are possible on Pikachu version, but we'll see. Uh, at this time, I would like to shout out our tech crew for the tournament. Uh, we got we got Jordan behind the scenes uh, helping out on tech, and you can definitely tell that Jordan is on tech. Our uh, friend from the UK because he spelled plot armor with a U, which is the the British way of doing it. But we love it. So so thank you, Jordan, and our entire tech team uh, for putting this tournament together. Yeah, thank you to Jordan for being up at 1.30 in the morning. That is true. Yeah, that's too. I mean, Echi was kind of complaining about the 5 p.m. EP uh, before the run started, uh, but Jordan's up late. By the way, Headstrong also had the uh, the spinner looking to the right and not up, so an optimal pass there. All right, so Echi going to heal here, um, and then keep Rapidash with him in in normal, you know, record PB attempts. You'd see runners uh, deposit the Rapidash, um, but having a second Pokemon with you is just kind of like we were mentioning earlier with like evolving Bellsprout, evolving Oddish. Just having that second Pokemon with you um, can be really nice to just get you out of some sticky situations. Yeah, at mi at minimum, it's like oh, just summon it in like in a pinch, um, but we'll likely see some some calculated plays uh, with it in there. Uh, Amber did not pick up the full restore, so that is worth noting. And Headstrong about to do the Alexa skip as well. Wow, that was the fastest Alexa skip that we had of this round. No fear whatsoever. So here on Lorelei, uh, we'll see Echi go to plus six. Uh, it's the only variance it's it's a pretty high threshold, a special attack threshold, to be able to safely go to plus four and only use two turns to set up. Uh, but with this lead, easily just go the three turns set up, go plus six. No issues, no ranges whatsoever on Lorelei uh, as you sweep her team. It'll be interesting to see if what Amber does here. Amber? Lapras. All right. Oh, Lapras. So Amber committing to some um, pretty safe strategies. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, definitely respect it. I think it's just a little bit too far out of reach, unfortunately, to catch Echi, but trying to solidify that second place time, I think is totally respectable. It didn't look like Headstrong got anything nasty on that Caroline fight either. Probably just All of her luck was on the Caden fight, or all of her bad luck. Uh, so, uh, funny story that I heard about Lorelei. If you go to plus six, uh, you can still just scald the Cloister. Yeah, Cloister has like 45 special defense or something yeah, like that. It's absurdly it's low. So like you could you could go to like have your menu input, and if you had a dropped menu input, you would still KO it. I've done so, that a few times. So. so interesting point here. You don't heal going into Bruno because Bruno actually is the easiest of the Elite Four members. He leads an Onyx. Remember, Onyx is basically just Rock Wurmple. Uh, it only has, what, 40? 45? Base 45. Attack. So it hits you with Earthquake, and it usually only does about 45 damage. It is interesting to note that Echi is at 65 right now. It has dropped to, what, mm. 28? Is that low enough? That's not low enough. Probably not, but, you know, I just want to put that out there. You know, maybe we can get a Commentator's Curse. I'm pretty sure Faint doesn't exist on this fight at all. It yeah, definitely I've never, never shows Faint. up. Never shows up. Yeah, I've never seen it. Uh, by the way, Amber did go to plus six and shows off the Scald oh. kill 
on the Glacier just to flex on Lorelei. Yeah, faint crit would technically kill, uh, but the likelihood of that happening. Um, yeah. Of all the bad luck that everybody has ever gotten in this game, I think that would be the worst of luck. It might be the only thing that could cost him the race, though. So let's just uh, throw that out there on this final Hitmonlee. Will we get faint? There's a bounty on the line. Will we see it? Nope. No. no. And Edgy is through Bruno just as Amber is starting. All right, so we're on to Agatha. This was typically where, like, the most dangerous three fights of the game would be. It's very appropriate that they are the final three fights. Um, but Etiquette, you actually did a ton of work routing some very safe strats for it. So you want to explain how we are likely going to be seeing Agatha here. Yeah, so um, actually, I don't think we're going to see Agatha this way for Etchy. I think we're going to see it for New Amber. But um, basically, Agatha, the main drawback of Agatha... Uh, the main danger is if you get crunch um, defense drop, crunch turn one, like there's a lot of like these awkward things. The standard way the fight's going to work, the way you're probably about to see Etchy do it, is you get turn one glare uh, when you set up an X special. Turn two is going to be uh, crunch where you set up an X speed. You then full restore. Ooh, and he gets crunch turn one. Huh? And never mind. Um, so this is going to be a little bit of a variation. Uh, he's going to actually set up on the wheezing here, but... Basically, what you can do to avoid this kind of sticky situation is if you have a Pokemon in your party that is weak to electric moves and not to poison moves, um, you can start the fight in two controller and just set up during the fight. So you can X special and psychic, you can X speed and psychic, and then you can actually X special again and scald the rest of the fight, uh, depending on your star. Um, and it's important that you have the Pokemon that's weak to electric moves and not to poison moves because you want the Weezing to come out second. If it's weak to poison, it'll be 50-50 if it sends out, if Agatha sends out the Weezing or the Gengar next, and you need the X speed to be active before Gengar comes out. Uh, so Otherwise the, you will get vaporized by Shadow Ball. Yeah, you will. Uh, so the, the infamous line of you need a bird or a fish, talking about specifically Dodrio and Golduck. Um, you'll Lapras. actually see Amber here using a Lapras, which fits the bill perfectly. Um, uh, so that's the I, I, safe way through Agatha. The safe way through Lance is a little bit more complicated because you don't want to have a second Pokemon with you on turn one because you can't actually KO the... Or you can KO the Seedra that leads in one turn, but then you're too slow for the Aerodactyl that comes out next. So what you actually do is you will standardly start the fight in one controller, use an X-Speed or an X-Special, and then summon the second controller on turn two to get rid of the Seedra and then blow through the rest of the fight. Um, Amber has a Lapras, and Lapras is just bulky enough to actually live any of the attacks that Seedra is going to have, uh, which is not the case for all of the other Pokemon that satisfy the requirement for uh, the Agatha fight. So uh, you're actually going to see Lapras most likely tank like a Hydro Pump, which will be really cool. Um, sets up the hp really nicely for the final fight which again you just go in with two controllers you set up as you go um ideally your partner pokemon dies in the champion fight uh on turn one or two and then you can just sort of do the rest as a one controller fight it is still a little bit slower than a normal one controller fight because there's some extra lag that you get for having two controllers out um, but it ends up being way safer. All in all, all of these strategies, if everything goes perfectly, it only loses about 15 or so seconds. Um, but you do have the opportunity to have, uh, for example, on the, or like on the Giovanni fight, your partner Pokemon can live on the champion fight, which does waste about 20 extra seconds. So, um, I just want to note before going further that uh, between this run, uh, Echi did get a world record Pika run just this past week. Uh, ended up getting a 259.31. It also got crunch turn one from the uh, from from Agatha in a run where he skipped the full restore. So he technically didn't need to use it, but he actually lost two total turns uh, compared to it. So it's kind of wild that to see him get almost like crunch turn one two runs in a row. Uh, which is probably why he said Unreal in chat. 
Uh, yeah. But yeah, having to kind of bail out of... If you start the fight one controller and then you bail out, uh, it's no longer... It's no longer quite as optimal. Like you say that it only loses 10, 15 seconds, but that's if it's completely optimal in the safe version. If you kind of half half safe risky, it's not like you're having the amount of time loss. You're actually adding extra time loss because mm -hmm. you're healing outside of battle. You're summoning the second controller in battle in an unoptimal way. Uh, there's actually a, a funny uh, race that we did where I was up by like 30. Five seconds or 40 seconds uh going into champ decided okay i'm just gonna go safe for this last fight i ended up losing 30 seconds so yeah it's completely safe you only lose 10 to 15 you go safe for one fight but do it halfway and you're gonna lose 30 to 40 seconds yeah so um that's why that's why you see a lot of runners really fully commit to the safe strats to reduce the amount of time lost because yeah completely safe loses you the least amount of time. You either got to go all safe or all risky to get the full benefits. Uh, Etchy looks like he did hit that range. It is worth noting that uh, for Dragonite, you want to hit 140 special attack. We're going to see it on Amber screen, 136. So the Dragonite is going to be a range. Uh, but Ice shard, ice shard. <laughs> but obviously with a partner Pokemon, you can just tap in that uh, missed range. In this case, Lapras does have ice shard. Uh, so you could even get some chip damage in uh, even before uh, attacking. Uh, and sometimes things like Dodrio or Rapidash are even faster than Dragonite anyway, so you can uh, Drill Peck or Stomp, respectively. We do get Ice Shard to really make any kind of range completely obsolete at that point. Yeah. So here we so go, Echi starting the champion fight to controllers. Yeah, so... The way that this fight's going to work, um, you're going to X speed and X special on turn one. Ideally, the Rapidash gets hit. Um, and in Pika version, you really like it when the Rapidash gets hit and lives. Uh, because on turn two, you're going to use another X special to get up to plus four. Um, and hopefully the Rapidash dies to a quick attack. And then finally, on the Vile Plume, you're going to X special again. Because Vile Plume almost always goes for Solar Beam, uh, which is completely safe. And then... Uh, you'll be able to just finish the fight in one controller. So this is actually a Andy. perfect setup here for Edgy. We've seen a lot of these rapid ashes live, um, but or getting not that even get there targeted. Is awesome. Yeah, yeah. In uh, in my in my perfect. experimenting, it was only about 50-50 for rapid ash to die. Uh, Dodrio ends up being a being a little less bulky, a little more likely to die. Uh, and depending on the Lapras HP, you get kind of the same situation. So again, perfect fight for Edgy two controller. Uh, he gets the solar beam as expected on the vile plume, uh, and he is set up fully and perfectly. Yeah, now, the one thing that can actually Amber, trip. Oh, I was gonna say, unfortunately for Amber, the Lapras is already at full HP, so it's actually a bit more unlikely uh, to be targeted or KO'd by the. Yeah, it does get air slash, so not all is lost here. I don't think it's enough for the quick attack. I don't think quick attack kills from here. Although I don't know the ranges as well. Yeah, not it's quite. Not, nope. Um, yeah, no, I was going to mention the only thing that you kind of have to, to be aware of. Um, so standardly, um, the trainers, trainers are going to send out the Pokemon in the same order as long as you have the same Pokemon out. And that means that on this particular fight, Slowbro is going to come out last because uh, Slowbro is just the worst Pokemon that Trace has against your Starmie. If you have two Pokemon out, um, the Pokemon that come out in battle are actually going to be sort of 50-50 depending on am I going to look at what's good against Starmie or am I going to look at what's good against Lapras. Um, so depending on your partner Pokemon, Pokemon may come out in a different order. And it's notable because standardly this fight you just spam Psychic until you're out of Psychics and then you Thunderbolt the Slowbro at the end of the fight. Slowbro can come out early, uh, which can trip up some runners, but... Uh, we should be able to see, I think, because Lapras is also a water type, I'm sure we're probably going to see just the standard order. So, And that is a GG for Echi. Yeah. That is GG for Echi. Uncontested in this tournament. is going to go 5-0. and oh. Our number one seed and world record holder, holding out in every single match on his way to the first ever Let's Go tournament victory. Uh, this will end up being about a 302. It's going to be really close to that 302 flat mark. 
uh, but still an incredible time to get a 302 in a race setting, in a tournament setting. It is fantastic. Put your hands together for your champion. It's Etchy with a time of 302-02. 5-0 in this tournament. Undefeated. And now, again, on your World Championship Sunday for Pokemon. <laughs> he's basically your speedrunning world champion. Hey. Hello, Etchy. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a so, run. That was a silly yeah, run. Fun fact, this, this run beats my uh, my first EV World record. <laughs> it's just funny how far the run has come in such a short amount of time. It is. Th this was this was honestly a pretty fun match um, to watch back and forth because you yeah. and Amber were actually quite close for a pretty yeah. long time. Yeah. Um, and I want to ask, like, we knew you were cooking after Rock Tunnel, but your catch count was low. Yeah. Uh, how nervous were you? Be honest. How how nervous were you heading into that those final catch sequences? I thought it was over. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like the moment I was like, oh, I have to catch like Tangela and uh, like Magmar or something. I was like, dude, I should have just kept the fossil. Like I, I've been, I didn't do any of my other races. I was like, surely it's not going to be an issue. And then of course, in the finals, it's an issue. I would have saved so much more time if I just got the fossil and kept it. Instead of selling it like a bozo, um, but fortunately only the one Magmar breakout, so it wasn't too bad. Could have been a lot worse, but it was still not great. <laughs> yeah, and then and then from there on there on out, it you had the lead, but the plot armor definitely uh, kept the uh, uh, kept kept your lead from getting chipped at uh, very too dumb. much there. Yeah, <laughs> this is like the type uh, of run. With that being said. Like... Second place, uh, new Amber did finish with a time just over 303. We welcome uh, Amber into the call as well. Amber, first of all, congratulations! Awesome tournament and thank you, and, thank and, you. And, GGs. And second place GGs. isn't anything to be sad about. Like, how did you feel for that run? Because it, it was solid. That run was. Uh, I mean, I the thing with that run, my luck was fine throughout the run. I just made like so many small misplays. I think. Like, I think, I, I think, like, there were, like, you know, like, six, seven separate times where I, like, made a play that maybe lost me, like, five, five seconds. And, like, those kind of, like, added up over the run. But, like, nothing horrible happened, but also, like, nothing, like, particularly great happened for me. It was just, yeah, like, a lot of small stuff. It seemed that kind of the tipping point of the run, and it's kind of weird to say it for how early I'm going to reference... It, it really felt like your Route 10 was kind of that tipping point where you were right there. You were neck and neck, and your Route 10 was just a little less than idea, ideal because you did have to go for uh, ultimately Nido Queen strats and catch a Nidorino. Did you feel the same way that that uh, was kind of the beginning of the end, or was it a little bit later? No, on? I feel like the kind of what, what kind of uh, put me behind was Rocket Hideout because yeah, the, I, the I made games. so many... I, I both got bad luck and made like four different misplays in Rocket Hideout. And I, after that, uh, I think you're like fine after that. Uh, I would have probably pushed harder for first until I saw actually Sabrina. And then after that, I was like, <laughs> I just have, I'm just like, I might as well just play for a second at this point. Cause like the only way I feel like I could have won is that if something like horrible happened to Etchy. And, I, and at that point, I should still be playing safe if that happens. Yeah, you were probably yeah. you were probably thinking like, uh, I need Edgy to get Carolined or to actually get. Faint. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I pretty much was like, yeah, Edgy needs to have like something horrible happen, like like Caroline, like uh, getting Kaden or something. I get the tried. She wanted to again. <laughs> I That's two runs in a row. Turn one cringe, crunch. By the way, turn one cringe. Turn one, turn cringe. one cringe. Yeah, yeah. Turn I agree with cringe. that. Unreal, dude. I literally haven't seen it in like years, and it's been two runs in a row, which means I should probably just throw away my switch. But yeah, <laughs> that switch entropy. Um, and finally, everybody should uh, put some claps in chat for headstrong, finishing strong, getting a three oh six, and third place in the tournament, which is absolutely. Woo fantastic as well um thanks for hanging in there headstrong for sure because uh yeah that's a that's obviously a tough ask when you're up against etchy and amber who uh, i mean through the run remember when remember when the wheel was a thing and we were spinning that wheel i mean how every everyone was like can i dodge 
etching amber so it's never an easy thing when you are paired against those two so uh uh congratulations headstrong commiserations as well um i know that might not have been the best of run for you um but your feelings and thoughts after the uh maybe not just this run but the tournament as a whole honestly for one very confused how i got in the finals but <laughs> that was still cool um outside of that and I mean, the run was definitely uh, interesting <laughs> today. Um, I unconsciously checked out after Giovanni, I guess, because I forgot Lapras, so I had to go back and get Lapras, and then I forgot to shop. So I had entered Sabrina's gym and then left the gym to go shop. No. <laughs> and I've never had either of those happen before, so I think my brain was just checked out on its own without me wanting it to be. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's understandable. But um, it, it is kind of funny that um, we were just mentioning that Echi's catch count was awful and low, but yours was really high. I mean, you had thirty-five exiting tunnel. Like, how did that feel yes. to know that you had you had the luxury of a high catch count going into endgame? I had a stupid amount of Pokemon. I was trying to figure out like what I needed, what I didn't need, and whatnot. <laughs> And on top of that, you got Abra on Route 7, so it was yeah. like, oh, even higher. Uh, the, fun, the fun thing with Endgame, um, I don't know if anyone noticed or not, I did some pumps that I shouldn't have gone for, but I did anyway. And I got 100% pumps, which was fun. Um, I pumped the Charizard on blue. Yes. Ooh. I pumped the Nidoking. King. <laughs> mm -hmm. I pumped uh, Rivals Raichu after Giovanni. Nice. And I also pumped the uh, Jinx in Lorelei. Very nice. In, in addition to... Uh, in, in addition, addition to, to the normal pumps. In addition to Naomi Jeez. and Caroline. So six for six. Nice. Way to go. I did one. <laughs> yeah, you did. yeah, you did one, but you still taught the move. I did yeah, because like it, it's worth it because Caroline's that bad. Like, so bad to give her two turns. Just get lucky. I missed the range on the Kanga, but I still hit the pump. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to open up to the other commentators if they had any other questions on the tournament. I mean, this, is a, this, this was a hell of a tournament. Let's be yeah. honest. It's, it's been two months. You know, and I know it's been a while. <laughs> um, but, like, every single round was so much fun. And uh, does I'll open this up to anybody, and this includes the commentators and the runners. Was there like a moment of the tournament? And it could be your race, it could be somebody else's race. Does anybody have like a moment of the tournament? Uh, I mean, what comes to mind immediately is actually me, our first race teapot was really, really fun. Like we were so, we were so neck and neck in late game there, and that was like exhilarating. And then also, that was, that was so he, fun up until Caroline because yeah. we were only like twenty <laughs> seconds apart going into Victory Road, and yeah, I was, was sweating. It was fun, once. and uh, of course, uh, being able to uh, play on games done quick. That mm -hmm. was definitely a big highlight. Thank you, Achi. All right, yeah, what? I... <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for letting I... us play on GDQ. Oh yeah, that was great. I'm I'm really glad we got to highlight that. That was awesome. Yeah, I think for I, me, as someone who didn't like partake in the tournament, just like thinking about how the tournament started, literally first race world record. <laughs> yeah, yep. that is true. Yeah, setting that the was tone absolutely absurd. For the whole rest of the tournament. Yeah, yeah. I think. Um, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say. I think it's not necessarily a moment, um, but I, I think one of the things that I'm super happy with. Uh, with how the tournament turned out is I just went through while we were while we were congratulating everyone I went through and checked we had 39 people participate in the tournament 31 of them have a better PB than they started with Ooh, wow wow yeah uh, and that doesn't count like Echi obviously got a new Pika PB twice during the tournament uh, both you know earlier this week as well as uh, in the first round doesn't count Echi because like you know you Still have a better EV PB, but like <laughs> that's 31 people got new PBs 
all but eight. It's absolutely absurd. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like uh, it kind of in a similar vein. Um, not a specific moment, but like it's it's really cool. Just like having so many people run the game at such a high level at the same time has just made the run better. Uh, not it's not like we found like massive huge strats, but the run is def definitely just faster than it used to be. Like we just made more realizations as a group uh, about like certain catch rates and certain things that you can just go for and just hope it works out. Um, it's definitely pushing me to work to look more into like routing like really niche weird ideas, even if they usually don't pan out. Uh, it's it's nice because uh, for like the last couple of years, this game's been relatively slow. Like there's been still a lot of really good runners, but it's not anything like it's been the last two months. So it's just been really cool to see more people running and pushing the game further and further. And hopefully we can keep raising the ceiling of what is possible for this game. So, yeah, I can mirror those thoughts, too, just to have everybody kind of work at it at the same time helps everybody. Uh, it helps all of our new runners, but obviously it's helped our top runners too, um, as we've heard from the PBs. But if I had to pick like a tournament, like moment, uh, did we have a, what, what did we, we had a shiny Snorlax, right? We did. We, we had a shiny Snorlax. I think that was probably the moment of the tournament was to see that Snorlax be shiny. And it was funny because that same week I was in an AOP race and uh, King Trubs also got a shiny Snorlax. So for it to, if I had a nickel for every time somebody had a shiny Snorlax, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it's happened twice. Um, yeah, it was just kind of that. It was kind of weird. Uh, but just to be part of so many close races, to have to game out of my mind against Amber uh, was also like really special for me. Um, to know that that run didn't have Rhyhorn and I was still in it the whole time. I was just like, how is this run this fast? But it's just shown how much that like we've come as runners. And then to have to try to do the same thing against Echi uh, in like the next round and like just try to, I was just trying to ball out there and to get a 301 <laughs> and still not advance. I was just like, man, it's so close. But uh, yeah, it just felt like every moment was like the moment. Mm. Yeah, it's like really races like this, like we've done through the tournament, is like really motivating for me because like mm -hmm. when you're in on the PB grind, like you know, like two things go wrong and you feel like like the world has ended because two things went wrong. But like seeing doing races and seeing like you know like you can do a race where like you know like so many different things go run wrong and you still get like a time that is really good, and it just goes to show I think like you know to not like i don't know get too down on bad luck when playing this game yeah absolutely i think the number one thing i think i realized and i realized it before the tournament started when we were doing like those uh you know the the races before the um the tournament started is just how consistent this game actually is like if you think about it in terms of like Oh, I want to submit this to a marathon or something like that. Like, I would probably have done an estimate that's like ten minutes higher than it actually has to be, um, just because of how like how many runs we've all done and just how consistent a lot of our times are. Uh, like, you know, Etchy's Etchy's worst time of the tournament was in round two, which was like a three oh seven, and it's because he died on champion and had to redo Lance. Like, those are the kinds of things that it's. You know, if that's the worst run that you did in the tournament, that's like obscene, you know, <laughs> and it's just like the amount of consistency that we as a community have, um, I think is is really, really inspiring because like they're obviously this this runs a bit different than other Pokemon runs, but mm -hmm. like there isn't another Pokemon run like that. Like you you can't have that level of consistency in other games. It just yeah, doesn't this, happen. Mm -hmm. It really highlights just how special this run is in terms of. You know, there's an absurd amount of RNG and different things that can happen. But if you're a really good player, you can still consistently get like within a range of times, assuming you don't die. Right. So like mm -hmm. uh, just being able to see that and uh, like like Aunt Rose saying, seeing what kind of times you can get when you're not just PV or bust is, is, is really cool. I'm going to add one more moment, and this was also before the tournament started. Uh, we had that massive in-person race at GDQ in the practice room. Oh yeah, and and a lot of us were just in the tournament, and and we did that as practice. And 
And that for me was like a really, really special moment because I think that was like the one of the first times that I had even like done a speed run not sitting at my own PC. Like I've done a bunch of marathon runs, but I've never done anything in person. Um, so that was like really special to be able to sit there with everybody, literally shoulder to shoulder, uh, and peeking, screen peeking, like <laughs> like behind me to see where everybody else was. Uh, that was super super fun and really special. All right. Um. Well, anyone have any other final thoughts? Uh, no. Just thank. You. Thank everyone, everyone for the tournament. Yeah, GG's. for the tournament. Yeah, GG's and thank you, Jordan, for tech as well and all the <laughs> other good stuff. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was gonna, I was gonna say thanks, big thanks to Jordan as well as the rest of the tech team uh, for putting this on. Definitely wouldn't be possible without them. Um, huge thanks to the uh, switch mods, so like Greta, um, May, and Naomi for helping out with a lot of the stuff as well. Um, I, I do want to say, um, you know, as one of the people who sort of like led the charge with this, um, this this has been really special for me. Um, this was a long time coming. We've been talking about doing a Let's Go tournament really probably since like Barrier Blitz back in 20, 2021. Um, and just to see it see it come to fruition has been has been really, really awesome. Um, you always don't you always worry about something like this flopping. And I, I think I can speak for everyone when I say like it, it absolutely didn't flop. Um, this was just a really, really fun time. Um, and I do want to say um, most people here probably are in the Discord. But if you are not in the Discord, um, I do recommend that you join. Um, over the next few days, it probably won't be right away. Um, but we'll do some sort of feedback form. Uh, this is something Maybe not the exact same format or anything like that, um, but this is something we want to we want to try to do again. Uh, we're we're gonna want to try to you know keep this uh, this kind of thing going. Uh, a lot of the other tournaments in PSR are yearly. Um, I don't know if we would do yearly. I don't know if we would switch it up with the category or game or anything like that. But um, it is something I definitely want to keep going. So we'll have some sort of form for people to submit feedback, um, things that they want to see change, things that they really liked about the tournament, anything like that. Um, and the, the more feedback we get, the better, um, we definitely want to make this as, as good as possible for both the participants as well as participants, the organizers and, uh, the viewers. So, um, and with that, I think I've said my piece. So I just want to thank everyone again for, for tuning in. Um, just seeing this many people excited about the game has been, been really awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you and GG, everybody. And again, uh, just another shout out to Jordan97. Thanks for being up at 2 a.m. to do tech for us. Yay. Yeah, the sooner we finish, the Yay. sooner we can sleep. So, <laughs> All right, we got to hold in here forever then. Oh, okay. He has the power to cut us off. It's, it's <laughs> oh, true. true. Do we have a credits video? We do have a credits video. That That is true. Um, <gasps> huge shout outs to CyJ for putting that together before going to Japan. So uh, I think with that, Jordan, let's roll the credits.